Chapter 341, Seamstress Wedding Dress The woman blinked several times before she fully regained consciousness. She gripped Chen Ji's sleeves, and the first sentence out of her lips was. It split open. The person's body split open. Huh. Slow down. There's no need to rush. Chen Gu patted the woman on her back and slowly helped her to sit upright. After you left with the two children, the six-headed monster was torn apart by the village's ghosts, and throughout the process, the black robe didn't move a finger. The Zhu woman's body was weak, and her words came slow and stunted. After the village's spirits shared the monster, they turned their attention to the black robe, but the moment they got near, they screamed and ran away. The ghosts were afraid of him? Yes, red blood started to seep from his body, and after the robe was peeled off, I saw that he was carrying a dead woman on his back. The woman's description made Shin Gu think of himself, but Zhang Ya had been hiding in his shadow. When he pulled off the black robe, did you see his face? No, actually, it felt like it was the female body that yanked the robe off. Are you sure it's a female body? Not a female ghost in a red outfit? In Chen Ji's mind, the difference between a female body and a female ghost was still big. I can still tell the difference between something like that. However, there's something unique about that body that is different from all the dead bodies that I've seen before. The Zhu woman tried her best to explain the situation, but since she had spent her whole life cooped up in Coffin Village, the words just could not come to her as easily. The body looked like it had been dolled up. It looked more like a display than a body. The society is indeed filled with mad people. Chen Gu was suddenly reminded of something and he asked, was the body beautiful? So far, other than Wu Fei and Wang Xinglong, only Han Bauer was still unknown. The comment of the third sick hall's doctor about this female patient had been, just how harsh must God be to make a woman as beautiful as this? Chen Gu paid attention when he saw this message. Xiong Qing was made into a red specter, so Han Bauer might have been made into something else. It's hard to understand the world of the crazies. I don't think you can call the body pretty. The woman also did not understand why she was being asked to judge a body's beauty, but she suddenly stopped. I almost forgot, the body didn't show any sign of decay, but the skin looked weird, radiating an aura of death. The more she described, the stranger it became. The thing number 10 was carrying seemed to be different from everything he had seen so far. What happened next? Why did all of you say the person split open? Chin Gu was curious about this. The woman's body was made up from numerous red threads, and regardless of whether it was living or dead, she shoved everything into her mouth like food. When she ate, her lips could split until here. The woman pointed at her ear. The woman's body could split open any place it wished. In a way, she looked like a moving body of lips. Listening to the Zhu woman's description, the monster sounded like a red specter, but if it was a red specter, there was no way the Zhu lady and the villagers could have survived. So why did the monster leave? The black robe wanted to capture the baby before turning to deal with us, but right then, someone entered the village. Was it the police? The woman shook her head. It was a doctor. He was wearing a white doctor's garb, and many playing children surrounded him. When this image crossed his mind, Chen Gu was weirded out. A bunch of children circling the doctor? All those children are ghosts. They seem to treat the doctor as their father. Now that the woman said that, it reminded Chen Gu of someone, Dr. Chen from Jiu Jiang's children's home. The doctor looks around forties, has a square face and thick eyebrows. I was too far away to tell. The woman thought about it. After the doctor entered the village, he headed right for the black robe. They seemed to be nemeses. Did they exchange any conversation? No, when the black robe saw the doctor, he immediately left. We were attacked by the children following the doctor. However, they did not harm us, they merely knocked us out. One last question. Was it you who transferred the babies from the ancestral hall to your home through the secret tunnel? Chin Gu stood up and prepared to leave. You even know that? The woman did not deny it. Whenever the female ghost returns for the annual massacre, 
Only my place is relatively safe. I heard that from the old lady. Is she your family? Chen Gu asked, but there was no answer. He turned to realize there was a weird expression on the woman's face. What's wrong? My grandmother passed away a long time ago, you couldn't have spoken with her. Even though he had suspected that, Chin Ji's heart still skipped a bit. But don't you worry, she probably had something she wanted to tell you. The woman signaled for Chin Gu to inspect the western side of the village. Before I fainted, I saw the black robe and the doctor heading that way. The gunshot came from that side as well. They probably ran into Ol Wei and Master Bai. Chin Gu was worried about the almost retired police officer and quickly rushed ahead. He ran for a while and started to hear the sound of a baby crying. Following the voice, he saw Master Bai and Ol Wei collapse next to a dirt wall with the basket between them. They were not injured, and to Chin Ji's surprise, Ol Wei's gun was sitting snugly in his holster. Chin Gu lifted the gun to take a look, and there was a shot missing. There is no slug around here. Did the thing that was shot get taken away? He stayed on guard beside Ol Wei and Master Bai until they woke up. It felt like a nightmare. Master Bai could still remember some of the details from the night before, but the situation with Ol Wei was slightly more complicated. He looked worried and kept telling Chin Gu that something scary had happened to him. When Chin Gu asked him about it, he had no recollection of said event. Ol Wei was clearly traumatized. He had forgotten everything that had happened in Coffin Village but he kept saying that something was not right. The night dispersed, and the sun was coming up. Chen Gu received the message that his mission had been completed. Congratulations, Spectres favored. You've completed the random three-star mission, Coffin Village. A new scenario has been unlocked. You have successfully completed the mission within the allocated time. Congratulations for winning the reward, Seamstress Wedding Dress. Chapter 342, Who Stole My Memory, Seamstress Wedding Dress My bone as the needle, my blood as the thread, my skin as the cloth, hopefully, you won't mind my blood-red wedding dress. Congratulations for obtaining the special type Baleful Specter, Seamstress Lingering Spirit. The three-star mission for Coffin Village has been completed. Completion rate, 70%, unable to obtain the hidden item. Chin Gu looked at the message on the black phone twice to make sure he did not see incorrectly. The completion rate is only 70%? I've run through the village several times already tonight, and I've been to all the places. How come the completion rate is only 70%? The black phone would never make a mistake, so he started to think. The Ghost Story Society's interruption caused the Coffin Village's ceremony to fail. Could that be a reason why? The key to completing the mission should be the female ghost. Either help her complete the ceremony or killing her will bring two different results, that should be the core of the mission. The woman said, since they refused to let her be a human, she wouldn't give them a chance to be ghosts. This shows that the Red Spectre's desire has changed, she wants a rebirth. Either helping her or stopping her would increase the completion rate, but due to the arrival of the society, before Chen Gu could commit to any choice, he had to start running for his life. Safety first. As long as I'm alive, there's a chance to raise the completion rate in the future. Chen Gu leaned against the wall and slid the phone in his pocket. But what shall I choose in the future? Help her get her rebirth or stop her? Coffin Village was hiding a large secret. The whole village could be seen as a tomb, all the villagers were paper doll sacrifices, the Zhu woman was the tomb guard, and the only dead buried here was the Red Spectre. Rebirth is impossible. Possessing others to create a nightmare is more likely, but if I stop her, we'll turn into enemies, and it will be an endless battle. Chin Gu turned to look at Fan Yu. The boy had his head lowered as he toyed with the jade bangle on his wrist. Inside the jade bangle were lines of red blood. The ghost seems to value Fan Yu a lot, and she has given him a precious bangle. She is Fan Yu's friend, and Fan Yu is my friend, so in a way, I'm also her friend. That's not so bad. Even though the woman is a vengeful spirit, she knows right from wrong, and she deserves the help. 
Furthermore, as a haunted house boss, isn't it my job to befriend souls from the other side? Chen Gu very quickly convinced himself. He told Fan Yu to try to keep that red specter big sister as happy as possible. For today's trial mission, Chen Gu was just an observer. Zhang Ya was asleep, and Su Yin was in the middle of his transformation. That meant that he had lost the right to join the battle. Thankfully, the result was not so bad. The scenario was unlocked, and Su Yin had a high chance to become a red specter. Even the white cat that swallowed the society's blood might experience some special change in the future. I've been running for a whole night, but how come I feel I've been heavily rewarded? The day was starting. It was 5 a.m. Chin Gu calculated the time. Even if he rushed non-stop, it would be hard for him to reach New Century Park before 9 a.m. Director Luo has given everything for this promotion, I cannot let him down. I'd better return as soon as I can. Chen Gu found the Zhu woman to discuss the issue regarding A Qing's son with her. In the end, Chen Gu did not take the baby away but left him to be taken care of by the Zhu woman. Ou Wei also asked the woman many questions, but the woman sided with the red specter in the well. She did not reveal any information. She said that this was just a normal village with a unique ceremony during that time of year. Ou Wei felt like he had forgotten something. It was as if he had drunk too much the night before and could not remember what had happened. Chen Gu was afraid that Ou Wei was affected by the society, so he led him to a room and had his employees check on him. They discovered that he was just fine. The gunfire from the night before should have come from Ou Wei's gun. He must have seen something and fired. It was probably that thing that stole his memory. Only Ou Wei had seen the thing that stole his memory, but he could not remember what that thing was. Chen Gu told Ou Wei to be careful and advised him from going out alone. He was worried that the death of the investigator might repeat itself. The villagers hated the outsiders, probably because they were afraid that others would see their abnormalities, so they stayed far away from Chen Ji's group. At 6 a.m., Chen Gu, Ou Wei, and Master Bai led the two children out of Coffin Village. They walked for one hour through the forest before Ou Wei and Chen Ji's phones rang. Finally, there's signal. Ou Wei recovered and called to report the situation to Captain Yen. The two kids had been discovered, but the doctor at the children's home had disappeared. Based on Ou Wei's understanding, he suspected that this was a premeditated kidnapping, the two children had probably been kidnapped by Dr. Chen to be sold. Captain Yen also relaxed when he found out that Ou Wei and Chen Gu were safe and the kids were found. He had them bring the kids to the station. When Ou Wei reported the situation to Captain Yen, Chen Gu logged into his social account. He realized from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m., he San and Gao Ru Shui had messaged him many times. They seemed to have urgent things to tell him. Chen Gu called He San and asked, What's wrong? Boss. Why didn't you answer earlier? Something big has happened. He San was so loud that even Ou Wei could hear him. Don't act so flighty, slow down. Chen Gu walked ahead to introduce some distance between them. Do you still remember Gao Ru Shui? It was the senior who joined me to visit your haunted house. Someone has disappeared from her dorm. Even though He San had lowered his voice, it still caused Chen Ji easier some pain. In that case, you have to go to the police. Why come to me? The person didn't disappear. I don't know how to explain this. The person looks the same, but the personality is completely different, like the soul has been exchanged. A ghost possession? Yes, just like that. Boss, do you want to come to our school to take a look tonight? This thing is just weird, and now my senior really needs your help. Temporarily, I don't have time. Chen Gu thought about it but did not reject directly. I'll call Gao Ru Shui to ask for more details. After hanging up, Chen Gu took out the black phone. The last side mission for the four-star scenario school of the afterlife was at Jiu Jiang's medical university. I should give myself some time to rest. At least I have to wait until Su Yin wakes up first. Chapter 343 Look behind you when Chen Gu ended the call, Gao Ru Shui's call came in. 
He San had probably contacted her. Is it that urgent? Chen Gu answered the call, but before he could say anything, Gao Ru Shui's purposely suppressed voice came through. I'm not wearing earphones, and my roommate is just outside the corridor, so don't raise your voice. Gao Ru Shui did not sound like she was in a good state, Chen Gu could hear uncertainty and anxiety in her voice. I just heard from He San that your roommate is possessed? It's scarier than that. I feel like she has changed into a completely different person. Is it because of change in habit? She acts like normal, but I can feel that it's not her. Gao Ru Shui sounded confident. Listen to me. This is related to legend at our school. There's a stone statue underneath the old education block whose eyes can bleed. According to legend, as long as you can find it before midnight, you can ask it a question. I have two roommates. One of them is Ma Xian, and the other is Lu Xianxian. That night, they went out together. Why did they want to go look for that statue? Just out of curiosity? Chen Gu interjected with a question. Lu Xianxian has fallen in love with a man that she shouldn't. She has been wondering whether she should get together with him or not. She comes from a single-parent family, so she lacks security. She would fall for anyone who treats her slightly better. We've tried to advise her, but she refused to listen. She stubbornly thought the man also loves her deeply but cannot be together with her due to multiple reasons. She wanted to have a clear answer, but she was afraid to ask the man so she thought to ask the statue to see whether the man's love for her is sincere or not. Chen Gu was inexperienced in the field of relationships, so he did not comment. Then what about the other girl? Ma Xian has a big sister, and she managed to get into Zhejiang's medical university five years ago. However, during her second year, she disappeared while she was on the way home and has remained unfounded to this day. She wants to find out about her sister's location her whole family do. When she heard about this rumor, she yearned to give it a try. Gao Ru Shui was halfway through when another female voice came from the corridor. It sounded like it was rushing her. After she answered, Gao Ru Shui spoke faster into the phone. The two wanted to find the statue, but they're both scared, so they dragged me with them. We departed last week and entered the old education block's underground rooms at 11 p.m. The place was filled with so many abandoned materials, so it was hard to find a statue. We searched the majority area on the first night but didn't find anything. On the second night, I thought they would give up, but they dragged me with them again. Since we've been roommates for so long already, I didn't have the heart to reject them, so I followed them underground a second time. However, this time, things were different. We didn't walk too far into the place before I heard something laughing. I asked them about it, but both of them said they didn't hear anything. I had a feeling something was wrong, so I forcibly dragged them out with me. I thought it would end then, but on the third night, they told me they still wanted to go. That was the first time I realized something off about them. I warned them if they insisted on doing this, I would report them to the school and dormitory security. Realizing I was serious, they unwillingly went back to bed. The real event that sent a chill down my spine happened on the morning of the fourth day. When I opened my eyes, both of my roommates were already awake. They lay in their beds, looking at me, with smiles on their faces. On the fourth night, they didn't show any signs of going out, but I just felt something was not right. I lay in bed and pretended to fall asleep. At 2 a.m., they sat up simultaneously and sneaked out of the room like this was something planned. I didn't dare chase after them. They returned at 3.30 a.m. They went back to bed like nothing had ever happened. The same thing happened on the fifth and sixth nights, but last night, things changed. They also left at 2 a.m. and returned at 3.30 a.m., but when they returned, three of them returned, not two. The light in the bedroom was off, so I could not see clearly, but it felt like all three of them were dressed similarly. They walked to the three beds and lay down, and the strangest thing happened. There were only three beds in the room, so this meant that one of them crawled into my bed. I didn't dare move throughout the whole night. I used my hands that were hidden inside my bed to call and send messages. You might not believe me, 
but this is the truth. All the replies, no matter who it was, was, look behind you. Only when I messaged you did the system reply normally. The additional person should have been lying behind me, and at the time, I could only message and call you, but you were unreachable. I stayed put until morning. When I looked behind me, there was nothing on the bed. One hour ago, my roommates woke up, and they acted like normal, calling me to breakfast and class, but… Aren't you ready yet? There was another female voice on the phone, and it sounded like a door had been opened. Coming, just talking with a friend on the phone. Gao Ru Shue's voice changed, she sounded calm. You rarely talk so much even to us, this isn't like you. You sure it's just a friend? The other girl commented with a laugh. In any case, don't just chat on the phone. Today's autopsy class is quite important. Okay. Then Gao Ru Shue spoke into the phone. If you have time, why don't you come over for dinner tonight? This is the first time I'm inviting someone over, so you'd better think about it. Hurry on to your class. I'll be over tonight. Chen Gu sounded magnetic on the phone like a confident, mature man. After hanging up, Chen Ji's expression changed. Gao Rushua asked me to meet her in person tonight, looks like this thing has really spooked her. Then again, why could only my contact be reached normally? He placed both of his phones in his palm, but he could not figure it out. Statue, the additional person, phone message. Actually, Chen Gu wanted to ask Gao Ru Shui if that underground room had anything to do with a morgue or not. Number 10 was carrying a body on his back. Could that body be related to the underground morgue at Jiujiang's medical university? Chen Gu examined all the clues in his mind, and the dots started to line up. Chapter 344, Open for Business When I see Gao Ru Shui tonight, I'll warn her that it might be time to move out of that bedroom. There was something scary buried underneath Zhou Jiang's medical university that Gao Ru Shui did not know about. After pocketing the phone, Chen Gu ran out of the mountain. Chen Gu reached Lin Guan village at 9 a.m., and Su Wan's phone call came, asking him why he was not at the haunted house and if something happened to him. Chen Gu brushed her off with some random excuses, and Su Wan told him some good news, Gu Feiyu had gotten out of the hospital already. This young security had been assaulted by the Ghost Story Society at Fang Hua Apartments and only recovered recently. He had already reported for duty at New Century Park early in the morning. Xiao Gu is quite a responsible worker, and the haunted house does need the manpower. Chen Gu told Su Wan that he would arrive at the park within three hours. He hoped that she would be able to calm the visitors down. Bringing the two kids into the police car, Ol Wei planned to drive them to the station but with Chen Gu begging him, he finally agreed to drop Chen Gu at New Century Park first. Chen Gu caught a quick 40 winks inside the police car and arrived at the park at around 11 a.m. He had been rushing throughout the night, and his clothes had been torn open by branches and trees. There was a dirty cat on his shoulders. He looked rather worse for wear. So sorry, I'm late. The resting tent beside the haunted house was already full as were the steps. Many visitors came purposely for the haunted house. The visitors were filled with complaints since they had been waiting for so long, but when they saw Chen Gu, the complaints were stuck in their throat. Xiao Chen, you're so late. Don't you know the time? Uncle Su had the park workers hand out some free gifts and water, and then he asked the question that was on everyone's mind. Where have you been all night? Many visitors came closer to listen. After all, they were intrigued by Chen Gu's appearance. Last night, two kids went missing from Zhou Jiang's children's home, and I went to help them look for the missing kids. We followed the trail into the deep mountain and discovered a village filled with deformed people. The whole village is just like a tomb where joyful occasions are shunned, and funerals are welcomed. There are white lanterns and paper money everywhere. When I arrived, they were in the middle of a ceremony with babies in bamboo baskets and a red coffin standing upright. The woman at the village held a pair of scissors in her hand as she carried the babies into the ancestral hall. When she exited, her clothes are drenched in fresh blood. Okay, you can stop now. 
Uncle Su quickly grabbed Chen Ji's arm. There was already a group of visitors around them. They were originally filled with displeasure, but the story was quite interesting. Why did you tell him to stop? What happened next? What kind of ceremony is this bloody? Is this village real? Let's leave, the boss has gone insane. Uncle Su tried to calm the crowd, but Chin Gu spoke louder. That's not even the scariest thing. He grabbed the loudspeaker that the worker used to maintain order and stepped on the railing to climb onto the midnight ticket counter. He was dressed normally, but he grabbed everyone's attention. After some deeper investigation, I realized the village is a ghost village. A place for the living in the day but for the dead at night. After midnight, the whole village is filled with ghosts. You definitely have not seen things like that before. Dead people holding a funeral for dead people, the funeral procession moving through the village. If you think that's all, then you'd be mistaken. The most dangerous thing about this village was the houses. The courtyards were planted with locust trees, and they had weird-looking monsters buried underneath them. If you're lucky enough to escape into the inner room, don't be happy so soon. Every room in the village is placed with a coffin, and a set of red grave clothes is placed inside each one. Regardless of whether you touch them or not, the clothes will crawl out of the coffin to follow you. You have to be careful with your every breath because, at any given moment, someone will call your name. If you answer the call, you'll enter the wedding night, and your partner will be a bride wearing a wedding dress made from human skin. Death Funeral, Ghost Village, Skull Lantern. All sorts of monsters reside in this village. A unique setting. Scary design. You only need to pay 30 to experience such an interesting scenario. That's the reason I'm late today, I've been busy building this new scenario. This latest three-star scenario will be opened for a limited period. Believe me, this is definitely the scariest village-themed scenario on the market. When Chin Gu finished, his voice still echoed through the park. It was just a sales pitch, but why do I feel so excited? What was I trying to say earlier? Since you have a new scenario and a special offer, I'm willing to forget that you're late. Losing memory. I want to try it out, but I'm afraid. This is so hard. The update speed of Chin Ji's haunted house would scare his competition out of the market. Chin Gu nodded in satisfaction, looking at the visitors in deliberation. The new scenario and limited time offer would save him from being late. He jumped down from the ticket counter and returned the loudspeaker to the worker. He opened the haunted house's doors. We're open for business. Chin Gu had Gu Feiyu change into the doctor's outfit and handed him the upgraded hammer. He was tasked with acting as the serial killer in Murder by Midnight. Su Wan was tasked with handling the Ming Hun scenario. The two one-star scenarios above ground had someone looking over them and the underground Mu Yang High School had the 24 students. Uncle Su was selling ticket, and Chen Gu was left with nothing to do. I should find more spirits like Uncle Yen and the students. They aren't malicious. If this continues, I can rest myself at the counter daily, with the sole responsibility of counting my income. Chen Gu rested at the door after sending the visitors in. He wanted to ask Gao Ru Shui for an update when he saw someone looking for him on WhatsApp. Yi Xiaoxin? That was the professional critic who entered Chen Ji's haunted house with the people from Tian Ting Medical School. She had been scared until she almost vomited. Then, she gave Chen Ji's haunted house a very high remark online and asked for his contact, saying she planned to help him do the promotion online. What's wrong? How can I help? Lately, there have been many comments trying to give your haunted house a bad review online. I searched high and low and finally found the culprit. Yi Xiaoxin sent Chen Gu several pictures. One of them is also a haunted house reviewer. We share quite a rocky relationship. As long as it's a haunted house recommended by me, she will critic it heavily. They might be visiting your haunted house soon, so be careful. Among the pictures that I've sent to you, there's the reviewer's selfie that she posted on the platform. Chapter 345, The Kind Boss Chen Chen Gu glanced at the picture. This woman looked just like a good little girl, 
she was wearing a cute dress in the picture and was a complete opposite to the tomboy Shi Xiaoxin. He moved the picture, and when Chen Gu saw the second screenshot, he started to get unsettled. The unassuming girl kept creating chaos online. One could find her on all the reviews Yi Xiaoxin had ever released. This was particularly obvious with Chen Ji's haunted house review. Initially, it was 9.7, but after a wave of negative reviews, it was pushed down to 8.9. Thankfully Chen Ji's haunted house had its own fans and many good reviews, or the point would have been lower. The other screenshots showed the woman going around to bring down the reviews for other haunted houses and raise the ratings for the ones she reviewed. The main point was that many online users were tricked by her looks and supported her no matter what. The comparison was quite obvious. The reviews on her main page were all maintained above 9, but the other reviews pointed out how unfair they were. However, she showed no sign of changing them. In Yi Xiaoxin's review, the highest was Chen Ji's haunted house, and the second highest was only 6. It's one thing if you make enemies with Yi Xiaoxin, but you've flooded my haunted house with negative reviews. In that case, I'll need to fight for myself or else it'll be unfair to my loyal employee. Chen Gu glanced at this woman's ID and even remembered what she looked like. There were many other screenshots. Other than this woman, there were parties purposely talking about New Century Park on forums and websites. It felt like they were trying to attempt something bad. I should tell Director Luo about this. After all, the haunted house is now the park's main attraction, so the lowering in the haunted house's review will affect the park's name. Sitting at the door, watching the visitors being led into the scenarios, and listening to the screams that escaped from within, Chen Gu felt quite accomplished. Earlier, Chen Gu had been calling all day, saying that the three-star scenario was temporarily open to public, but most of the visitors were experienced. They would Google the review before they entered the haunted house. For most, a three-star scenario was like a taboo for living humans. Chen Gu sat at the door until noon. He almost fell asleep when he was shaken awake by Uncle Su. What's wrong? Uncle Su? Uncle Su coughed twice and pointed behind him. These few visitors want to challenge that new scenario that you mentioned. The environment is passable, four points. The worker is so lazy that he fell asleep at work, two points. Five visitors stood at the door, three males and two females. One of the females was typing on her phone. When he saw the woman's face, Chen Gu stunned before he turned habitually to a smile. Welcome, the new scenario hasn't been tested before. You're so lucky. It's too late to change your attitude now. I want to see the most authentic experience your haunted house has to offer. The woman raised her head. She had a baby face, but her voice was coarse, revealing her actual age. Aren't you here to visit the haunted house? Chen Gu pretended like he did not know what she was talking about. You can call me Cassie. I'm a professional haunted house reviewer, and I have several hundred thousand fans online. If I feel like your haunted house is not bad and I place it on my recommendation page, your visitor number will increase by 33%. The woman was prideful. Of course, you have to make me believe your haunted house is worth it, but so far, it is not living up to its name. Chen Gu was too lazy to listen the woman's boasting. Do you have a Chinese name? Like Tai Zhu or Go Dan Wan, something easier to remember. The woman's face fell immediately, but she did not get into an argument with Chen Gu. This girl would maintain her persona around her friends. She did not speak, but the two men saw how hurt she was and walked forward to defend her. One of them had a head of hair dyed yellow, with an earring and nose ring. He looked like a hippie. The other was more normal, but he was around 1.9 meters tall. Fine, since you're here, you're my visitors. Let's not waste time, sign these disclaimers. Chen Gu did not want to get into an altercation with them. He gave them the contract to sign, and the excitement in his voice made the hair on Uncle Su's body stand upright. Xiao Chen, they just want to give an objective review, don't act recklessly. Haunted House has been open for long already, don't you know me? When have I been reckless before? Chen Gu pushed Uncle Su out the door. 
Don't worry. You say that every time. Uncle Su did not voice his real opinion since there were outsiders around, but there was obvious worry in his eyes. The five visitors noticed the look in his eyes, and for some reason, they felt creeped out. Is this uncle also employed at the haunted house? He's such a good actor. Just a look can express so many complicated feelings. After sending Uncle Su away, Chen Ji's smile grew brighter. Come, sign the disclaimer. Coffin Village is open for the first time for visitation, so you have to be careful of safety. If you come into any danger, do scream, and the worker will come save you. Chen Ji's attitude was flawless, but the more he acted like this, the more worried the five visitors became. The new scenario is just a gimmick, there's nothing to be afraid of. Actually, this is just a trial. A uniquely Eastern haunted house experience I made using local folklore, it's completely different from the Western and Japanese horror houses, Chingu explained theme of Coffin Village briefly. When the visitors heard it was not the Western and Japanese horror theme that were common on the market, they sighed in relief. Actually, there were few Eastern-themed haunted houses in the country, but probably due to budget and inexperience, the effect was lacking. An Eastern-themed scenario? Earlier you also mentioned it was a haunted village, right? That's very rare. The one who spoke was the other woman. She had pigtails and looked quite young. Chen Gu glanced at the woman's name on the disclaimer. It was rather common, Zhang Lan. That's why I'm interested to give it a try. Chen Gu collected all the disclaimers carefully. It felt like he knew they would come into use eventually. Come with me. The new scenario is underground. Wait a minute. The woman suddenly spoke. She was a cunning one. Before she arrived, she had looked over all the information on Chen Ji's haunted house. Furthermore, they were challenging a three-star scenario, so she had to be careful. I hear for scenarios above two stars, you accept teams of ten. There's only five of us now, why don't we wait for other visitors to join us? Chen Gu thought about it and agreed. Then let me go see if there are any other visitors who wish to join. Thank you. The woman smiled sweetly. It's nothing. Our haunted house always put our visitors' request first. Chen Gu turned and walked out. After Chen Gu left, the few visitors started to talk among themselves. Sister Mao, what are you afraid of? The five of us have cleared how many haunted houses already? Other visitors will only drag us down, the yellow hair grumbled with dissatisfaction. This guy is friends with Yi Xiaoxin. I'm afraid he might trap us inside the haunted house. If there are other visitors, he won't do something like that. The woman took out her phone and added, the worker has attitude, three points. Five minutes later, Chen Gu pushed open the door. He slid the comic into his pocket, and three people followed behind him. Two guys and one girl. The woman was very pretty, but her body was unsteady. One of the guys had his left hand stuck in his pocket, and the other was wearing a black shirt, grumbling about his recent bad luck. You're so lucky. These three visitors also want to visit the new scenario, so the eight of you can experience it together. A smile hung on Chen Ji's face like serving the visitors was a very happy thing for him. Chapter 346, Wave of Ghosts Coming Through, I've Already Introduced the Scenario. Three-star scenario, there's no path to follow, and it's completely open. All you need to do is find a blood-red wedding dress and bring it out. Chen Gu came up with the rules on the spot. After all, this was his haunted house, his words were the rules. That's simple. The young hare turned back to ask Chen Gu, are there any hidden conditions? Some haunted houses will design multiple side missions to make the experience more enjoyable. They allow the visitors to explore the place on their own, to increase playability. There are many hidden plots inside my haunted house. You can explore it to your heart's content. Chen Ji's smile was like the sun, it made people feel warmed. Then how about time requirement for clearing the scenario? The large man chimed in. It was quite obvious that they were experienced players. They knew the ins and outs of haunted houses. 
Since this is the first time the place has been open to the public, I'll give you more time. As long as you can find the wedding dress in 40 minutes, I'll consider it a success. Chen Gu was kind. He wanted the visitors to experience Coffin Village fully, so he purposely extended the time limit. We won't need 40 minutes. The young hair flicked his bangs back. He too was a prideful man. We've reviewed many haunted houses, and the longest we've taken was 30 minutes. 40 minutes is indeed too long, but this way we can look around. The leading woman still held her phone, having no intention of putting it away. When Yi Xiaoxin entered the haunted house, she had used her paper and pen for her notes. Based on this alone, one could see they were not on the same level. Actually, Chen Gu knew what the woman was up to. The haunted house review was just a gimmick. She wanted to use the scary atmosphere to create a contrast to her cute demeanor. She was a lesser reviewer compared to Yi Xiaoxin, who knew and respected the rules of haunted houses. Yes, go look around, you might find more hidden joys. Chen Gu was so kind that even the three visitors following him could not stand it. After he had the three new visitors sign the disclaimers, he led the eight of them to the end of the corridor and lifted up the wooden boards. A blast of cold air came from underground, causing them to shiver. Only a wooden board is used to separate the scenarios. It's too rough, minus one point for set design. The woman added another note to her phone. Chen Gu was not angry. He was so nice that even his reminder was given with a kind smile. Our haunted house doesn't allow the usage of phones and other recording devices. Please do mind that. I'm a certified reviewer. The phone is just to record data. Don't just assume stuff. Understood, when you start your review, please be kind. Chen Gu politely sent the eight into the scenario. The one on the left is the two-star scenario Mu Yang High School, the one behind the steel door on the right is the third sick hall. Coffin Village, which you're challenging today, is just ahead. When Chen Gu entered the underground earlier, he had seen a meandering path appearing between the third sick hall and Mu Yang High School. At the end of the path was a pale light. Coffin Village is at the end of the path. This is where I'll leave you, have fun. Chen Gu stood at the mouth of the path and sent the visitors away. It's nice that the three scenarios are separated but after the expansion turns the haunted house into a maze, all the underground scenarios might join together to create a large scary scenario. After three expansions, the haunted house would morph into a maze of terror. It had been expanded twice already, and the third time was not that far away. Chen Gu looked down the other two scenarios. Inside the Mu Yang High School, the sealed classroom's door was pushed open. A mannequin head peeked out as if to see whether Chen Gu had already left or not. When it saw Chen Gu, it rolled back into the classroom and closed the door. Those students sure are naughty. I'll need to have them memorize the workers' rules later. Chen Gu returned to the surface and headed to the props room. He ransacked the place and finally found the reward at the corner, seamstress wedding dress. The tattered wedding dress was red as blood. It was possessed by a hatred-filled spirit. If one leaned close enough, one might even hear the weeping of a woman. If the visitors saw this, they would be so angry. Chen Gu had not even placed the thing that they were supposed to look for into the scenario. The happiness in finding it after looking for a long time is the real fun of the game. He wrapped the wedding dress inside a black cloth. Chen Gu entered the changing room. This was the unique construct that he had obtained after the haunted house's second expansion. None of the visitors had tried it before. Chen Gu selected one of the less conspicuous outfits and put on some makeup. This is not bad. I look normal from afar, but upon closer inspection, it's quite scary. Chen Gu entered Coffin Village again. He used the black phone to inspect the hidden tunnels and pathways inside the village and took out the comic. When the Ghost Stories Society was battling the Zhu woman, Chen Gu had made use of the opportunity to collect a few ghosts into the comic. After a whole night of education, the lingering spirits had been reformed. I've told you it's a good decision to follow me. This is the new home I've arranged for all of you. 
the whole village is yours. You can feed on the visitors' fear and screams, but remember one thing, you cannot harm the visitors and no physical contact, understood? Chin Gu walked through Coffin Village and tossed out the ghosts as he went. The completion rate for the mission is only 7%, which means the scariest thing at this scenario hasn't arrived. Thankfully, I remembered to carry some ghosts from the village itself. Looking at the village that came back to life, Chin Gu flashed a satisfied smile. Even though it is quite harsh and demanding, all the sacrifice is worth it to give the visitors the best experience. Chin Gu felt like he was the kind that worked in the background. If he revealed all the effort he had done, the visitors would be so touched. Amid creepy music and a heavy atmosphere, when the eight visitors reached the end of the path, what they saw stunned them, rows of old houses, intertwining streets, fluttering paper money, and the white paper lanterns giving off pale light hanging at the door. This is Coffin Village? The leading woman shrunk back and silently hid behind her companions. Chapter 347 There's no need to go fast, such a real setting, the large man mumbled. How did he do this? Of course, he has to be talented to have opened a haunted house. Furthermore, Yi Xiaoxin gave this place such a high review. This means this haunted house has its positive points. The woman stood behind the yellow hair. She walked toward the other three visitors with a friendly smile. Are the three of you together? The woman was good at socializing. Her tone and attitude were very friendly. No, the man with his arm in his pocket replied coldly before he walked away. Be careful, this is a three-star scenario. The woman grabbed the thin man's sleeves. The man turned back to glare at her, and she quickly staggered back. I just want to remind you. Sister Mao, just ignore him. When he is spooked until he wets his pants, he'll come back to us. The yellow hair stood between the man and the woman. It's all right. Since we're in the same group, we should help one another. The woman did not seem to mind the man's offensive behavior. She walked back to him. My name is Cassie, but you can call me Sister Mao like the rest of them if you like. The thin man thought about it and accepted her kindness. The names by Chiolin. My mood has been very awful lately, so I came to this haunted house for stress release. Understood, a haunted house is a place like that, right? To scream and release stress. Sister Mao nodded with understanding before she turned to the other two visitors. Then how about the two of you? The man in black shirt looked smart, and he was very friendly. My name is Zhou. I'm a real estate agent. I came with my girlfriend today. Who's your girlfriend? The woman beside him smacked his arm. She did not have any makeup on, but she looked pretty. Well, it's only a matter of time. Mr. Zhou winked at the woman as he grabbed the woman's hand. This is my girlfriend, Duan Yu. She's a high school English teacher. Normally, she has no break and has to tutor kids at night. It's rare that we both have a day off, so I brought her here to relax. You two sure are sweet. Sister Mao smiled. There was a trace of resentment in her eyes, but she hid it very well. Later, the three of you can follow along. This way, we'll be able to be on the lookout for one another. You sound very professionally. Are you all professional haunted house visitors? Mr. Zhou asked. I'm a haunted house reviewer. I have tons of fans online, and these guys are members of my team. Sister Mao introduced the people around her. The yellow hair was Huang Xing, the large man Ma Tian, and the other girl was Sister Mao's assistant, Zhang Lan. Sister Mao didn't introduce the last man, who looked older than the rest of them, in detail, but she called him Brother Wang. Each of them had a different personality. The only reason they could work together was because they had Sister Mao as the mediator. You all are indeed professionals. Then today we'll be depending on you. Mr. Zhou was a people person as well. He continued to chat happily with Sister Mao like he could not see the fiery gaze Duan Yu was directing his way. Don't worry, we've completed more than ten of such haunted houses already. Huang Xing was the bravest and the rashest of the group, so he walked ahead. Come on. 
The online review for this place is very high. I want to see how good it is. To make it convenient for recording, Sister Mao walked into the scenario with her phone on. A wind of unknown origin picked up the paper money from the floor. The white lantern swayed as the pale light washed the street white. There are three main elements to a haunted house's design, story, setting, and atmosphere. For this setting, I can give him six points, but alas, without a story to go with it, it's difficult for visitors to feel invested. The atmosphere is the worst, I don't feel afraid at all. It's such a waste of these realistic props, Sister Mao said and the two men next to her nodded. Only Zhang Lan kept turning back to look at Bai Chiulin. She felt something was wrong with this man. How come he keeps his left hand inside his pocket? The eight of them squeezed together, and five of them were professional players. Naturally they were not afraid. The boss said there's a time limit. The place is so big, why don't we split into two groups? Mr. Zhou thought about it and voiced his suggestion. Forty minutes is more than enough for us to clear this game. For a haunted house, especially one that is open like this, it is crucial not to fall into their tempo. The yellow hair looked experienced. The two of you just follow behind me. To tell you the truth, I've always been brave. Even if a real ghost appears, I'll fight them with my bare hands, much less haunted house actors. Impressive. Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu followed behind the yellow hair. Sister Mao walked with the tall guy while Zhang Lan stood between Brother Wang and Bai Chiulin. She realized Bai Chiulin had many habits that were quite abnormal. For example, his neck was slightly twisted like it was sprained. What are you looking at? Brother Wang glanced at Xiao Lan. He seemed to have his own reason to be there. He was not familiar with Sister Mao's team members. It was the first time Zhang Lan had met Brother Wang. She also had no idea why he was tagging along. It's nothing. By the way, I'll be following you later. Sister Mao told me that. The group walked ahead, and Bai Chiulin looked at their backs with a smile on his face. The pale light pulled their shadows long as they formally entered Coffin Village. When they stepped into Coffin Village, the white lanterns lining the street on both sides started to sway. The village turned darker like something was waking up. Creek. Yellow hair pushed open the door to the first old home. The empty courtyard had nothing. That's all? He sounded disappointed. With Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu accompanying him, the three entered the inner room together. There was a black and white picture sitting on the altar. The person in the picture had their eyes gouged out. There was painting of a mountain spirit on the walls, and a coffin sat in the middle of the room. The decoration is simple, there's nothing particularly scary. The yellow hair turned around the room. He picked up the picture on the altar and started to study it. Why did they gouge out the eyes? Is it hiding the clue to clear the scenario? He undid the frame and took out the picture. The person looks like he's crying. The man prepared to examine closer when Mr. Zhou's voice came from behind him. What are you looking at? It's nothing just looking around. I like to clear all the stories inside a haunted house, it's more fun that way. I feel like we shouldn't be wandering about. The crucial thing is to find the wedding dress. What if we run out of time? Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu walked over on tiptoe. Don't worry, there is enough time. The yellow hair flicked his hair back and raised two fingers. We can finish this place in twenty minutes, but there's no need to. It won't be fun that way. He faced Mr. Zhou, so he did not notice the ghosts in the pictures that were all looking at his back. You're right. Taking it slow is more fun. Mr. Zhou silently moved the black and white picture away. The position of the man inside the picture had changed like he had moved one step forward. Chapter 348, Something's Wrong Reaching Out to Press the Face of the Man in the Picture, Mr. Zhou agreed with the yellow hair. Indeed, why should we be in such a hurry? It's rare that we have the chance to come in here, so we should make the most of it. Mr. Zhou was actually talking to the spirit inside the picture, but Yellow Hair thought the man was talking to him, so he concurred. That's right. 
That's the spirit you should have when you're inside a haunted house. Come on, I'll bring you to go visit some other places. This haunted house is not that scary, it's probably just a hoax online. Yellow hair led the two out of the old home. They searched through many homes before they reached the center of the village. The scenario is rather big. With our current speed, we might not be able to finish it in 40 minutes. If we cannot find the wedding dress before 40 minutes, it'll be such a shame, the large man told the rest. I think we should split up. With this ancestral hall as the center, Sister Mao, Mr. Wong, and myself will go to the left, and the rest of you go to the right. Why should you be with Sister Mao? I think it's better if we switch places. The yellow hair was unhappy. In the end, it was Sister Mao who convinced him to let it go. Then it's decided. Ma Tian's group walked down the meandering road, leaving the rest in the middle of the village. We should plan this out as well. Xiao Lan, you go with the couple, and I'll stick with the other guest. This way, we can save time and hopefully find the wedding dress before them. Yellow hair took up the leadership role naturally. I don't think that's a good idea. We're already split. What if we run into danger? Zhang Lan walked to stand beside the yellow hair, hoping he would change his mind. Listen to me, this haunted house's atmosphere is not bad, but the scares are horrible. The insouciance in yellow hair's tone made Zhang Lan anxious. She wanted to tell yellow hair, the visitor that you're pairing yourself with is quite abnormal. However, she did not want to say that before by Chiulin. It'll be fine, let's go. Yellow hair extended his hand toward Bai Chiulin, wanting to shake his hand, but Bai Chiulin did not show any intention of pulling his hand out of his pocket, he just nodded. You sure are something else. Later, don't come to me with tears, begging me to help you out. Yellow hair was quite angered. He took back his hand and walked ahead on his own. Bai Chiulin trailed behind him and still kept his hand inside his pocket. Zhang Lan saw this clearly, and her painted brows creased. Something is just not right. What is not right? The friendly Mr. Zhou came to stand beside her. By the way, I have some questions to ask you. Zhang Lan pointed at Bai Chiulin, who walked away. That man came together with you. When you were in the lines outside, did he do anything weird? Or something out of the ordinary? When we were in the lines? Mr. Zhou scratched his chin in thought. When Boss Chen shouted that there was a special discount for visitation of this three-star scenario, we were closest to the entrance, so we were selected. I don't have any special impression of the man. He's probably just a normal visitor. I hope so. Zhang Lan was still worried. Let me tell you something. There was one time when I accompanied Sister Mao to review a haunted house, and a mental patient sneaked into it. He looked just like a normal person, but he acted up inside the haunted house. You have no idea how scary it was. Why don't you tell me? Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu were curious. He slathered himself with the fake blood inside the haunted house and then grabbed the prop to assault the other visitors. The worst thing was initially the visitors thought he was an employee at the haunted house. They were afraid, but they did not resist. This caused many injuries. Zhang Lan still had nightmares of that experience. How could something like that even happen? Mr. Zhou's hand went to his lips. His action was quite exaggerated. That's why I'm worried about Huang Xing. He might be hard to deal with, but he's my companion. By then, Yellow Hair and Bai Chiulin had already disappeared from their view. If I were you, I would be worried, too. Mr. Zhou very naturally took up Duan Yu's hand and turned to look at her with love. If you went missing, I would look all over the world for you. Duan Yu's reaction was cold. She only said one word. Lies. You two sure are a loving couple. Zhang Lan laughed. She had just come to visit a haunted house, she did not expect to be fed dog food. Let's start moving as well. The earlier we find the wedding dress, the sooner we have the upper hand. The mention of the mission made Zhang Lan turn serious. I'm Sister Mao's assistant. 
I investigated this haunted house before we arrived. The information I've found is quite scary. The reviews from actual visitors are all above 8. Minus the trolls, all the reviews said this place is scary. We've reviewed many haunted houses before, and this is the first time we've seen something like this. Meaning this haunted house is very scary? Mr. Zhou looked around him. I don't think it's that scary so far, just a bit cold. Don't let your guard down. I suspect the boss is just biding his time. Zhang Lan took out her phone to click open a page. Look at the online review for the boss. Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu glanced at Zhang Lan's home and saw about ten anonymous reviews. The boss is insane. Like a serial killer, he discovered me but didn't say anything, trailing behind me silently. The man followed me for ten minutes. If not for my friend who screamed, I really didn't know there's something behind me. Don't ask me why I'm an Anon, I still want to see tomorrow's sunrise. The boss is too scary. My friend asked why I brought extra underwear with me to a haunted house. I say, if you want to prepare diapers, it's also fine. Reading all the anonymous reviews, Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu's expressions changed. They had a new understanding of Chen Gu. Scary, right? Zhang Lan pocketed her phone. So, I say we better find the wedding dress as fast as we can and leave this place. Okay. Mr. Zhou arranged his emotions. Then, what shall we do next? I'm a little worried about Huang Xing. Let's go meet up with him first. Zhang Lan pointed toward the road that Yellow Hair had headed down earlier. Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu followed behind her. By then, Yellow Hair and Bai Chiolin had reached the end of the street. They found a sedan at the corner. A bridal sedan? Yellow Hair was excited. Looks like the wedding dress will be nearby. I've found the right place. He ignored Bai Chiolin and walked into the house where the sedan was parked alone. There's white paper everywhere. Is this a Minghun? Yellow hair looked left and right but forgot to look behind him. The sedan that he had passed earlier started to move on its own. Chapter 349, Where is my hand? After yellow hair entered the home, two children with painted faces poked their heads out from the sedan. Bai Chilin acted like he did not see this creepy scene and walked past the sedan. The white lantern above the door swayed several times before they went out, throwing the home into darkness. White celebratory posters were pasted on the wall, and yellow hair stood in the courtyard alone. This place is larger than the others. Plenty of traps must be around here. He might be reckless, but he was not dumb. The atmosphere in the home was slightly off, he had already noticed that. Huang Xing. Someone was calling his name. It sounded ethereal and seemed to come from the inner room. Someone's calling me? He tried to follow the voice, but it disappeared as if he had imagined it. It should be some kind of surround sound system. I'm surprised such a dilapidated set design has high-end equipment. Without him realizing, Huang Xing was nervous, and he pushed the door open carefully. White draperies covered the room. It was a wedding, but the place was decorated like a funeral. It really is a Ming Hun, such an old, used theme. Huang Xing. Yellow hair talked to himself when that weird noise appeared again, and this time, he heard it clearly. The voice is familiar. It was a strange feeling. It sounded like a familiar person who called his name, but he could not remember who it was. The old home, the paper money, the white decoration, there was no change to the surroundings but Huang Xing felt like everything had shifted, like it had turned creepier. A draft picked up behind him to chill the back of his neck. He turned around instantly. Who is it? Why are you panicking? It's just me. Bai Chilin had his hand in his pocket and started to look around the room. Seeing a second visitor, Huang Xing sighed in relief. Did you hear a woman's voice earlier? I don't think so. Bai Chiolin studied the decorations, but he made sure to stay close to the door. But I did hear someone calling my name. Yellow hair looked outside the door, and there were two children with blood-red paint on their faces running through it. Someone's outside. 
Bai Chiulin also looked out the front door. There was only an empty street. What are you talking about? Where are the people? But they're there. There were two kids with something painted on their faces. Huang Xing tried his best to describe the features of the two kids. Do you think the haunted house would employ children to scare people? If it was not mannequins, then you were definitely mistaken. When Bai Chilin turned away, the two children poked their heads through the front door again. No, I'm not mistaken. This time, Huang Xing matched the gaze of the two children and ran out immediately. Wait for me, I'll catch them for you to see. Huang Xing rushed to the front door, but the two kids had disappeared. The street was empty other than the paper money and the creaking bridal sedan. Where are they? I only took several seconds to run out here. Where can they disappear to? Huang Xing. Yellow hair shivered, and the woman's voice came again. Why does it sound like the voice is closer when I'm outside? It feels like she's talking into my ear. He took out his phone to use the torch to find the hidden audio system, but when he turned the torch on, the woman's voice picked up again. Huang Xing. This time, the voice was even closer, like it was trying to drill into his mind. This is cursed, too cursed. Yellow hair had been to many haunted houses, and this was the first time he had run into something like this. I cannot stay here alone. I need to find the wedding dress and meet up with Sister Mao. He turned back into the inner hall and discovered something even scarier, Bai Chiulin had disappeared. How could a live person disappear just like that? Where is he? A rare emotion rose in Yellow Hair's heart, fear. Bai Chiulin. Yellow Hair called the man's name as he moved into the bedroom. The room was different from others. The bed and mattress were red in color, but it did not feel auspicious, if anything, it felt bloody. It was not paint but blood that dyed the fabric. This looks like the room of the bride. The wedding dress should be here, right? Yellow hair walked forward, and he saw many red threads on the ground. They were particularly conspicuous in the room filled with paper money. He walked over those red threads to the bed. The red pillows were tossed in a messy way, and there were needles, thread, and scissors left on the bed. However, there was no wedding dress. The place that should have had the wedding dress did not have it. Huang Xing gritted his teeth. I knew it wouldn't be so simple. He lifted up the mattress, and there was an obvious bloodstain. It looked real. Huang Xing looked down. When he was focused on his search, the woman's voice appeared in his mind without warning again. When a person was highly tense, they would be spooked by a tap on the shoulder, much less a voice in their head. Yellow hair almost fell to the ground, and he grabbed the edge of the bed to stop himself from falling. He took a deep breath, and his fists tightened. That wasn't an audio system. It couldn't be. He twisted his arms, and his heart raced. That voice said something else. Yes. She said look down. Huang Xing looked on the ground, and he realized all the red threads led to the space underneath the bed. Underneath the bed? His Adam's apple moved as he slowly squatted down. He held the edge of the bed with one hand, and his other supported his weight on the ground as he lowered his head. His sight slowly lowered, and his senses were taut. He gritted his teeth, and just as his head was about to reach the ground, a hand suddenly reached out at him. F asterisk CK. Huang Xing collapsed to the ground. He crawled backwards with fear in his eyes. That was a chopped hand. There was no arm, just a hand. He had not recovered from his shock when he knocked into something on his back. Turning back to look, yellow hair saw Bai Chiulin standing behind him. Are you trying to kill me? Where have you been? Just walking around. By the way, what did you see under the bed? Bai Chiulin asked with curiosity. A chopped hand. It doesn't feel like it was remote controlled. It just poked out from underneath the bed. Yellow hair wiped the cold sweat from his forehead, his calves still shaking. We need to leave this place, come give me a hand. Huang Xing reached out to grab Bai Chiulin's left hand, but he missed. Holding the empty sleeve in his hands, 
Yellowhair's face was blank. His brain could not process the information. Where, where is your hand? His neck snapped like he had fallen headfirst from a tall building, and blood seeped from by Chulin's mouth and nose. He turned to look at his empty left sleeve, and a happy smile was on his face. You're right, where is my hand? Chapter 350, Triple the Happiness His Eyes Bulging Out of Their Sockets, Yellow Hair Felt Like He Was About to Faint. Have you seen my hand? Bai Chiolin looked down at him when his neck snapped, and his head fell to the ground. Where is my hand? Zhang Lan's group, who were heading toward Huang Xing, heard the man's scream that came from the corner. The scream pierced through their eardrums. Just what had the man been through to make him scream like that? This is bad. Hearing that, Zhang Lan's face changed. She told Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu, something happened to Huang Xing. I told you something is wrong with that by Chiolin. Isn't it normal to scream inside a haunted house? It probably has nothing to do with Bai Chiolin, Mr. Zhou said. If it was a prop, then he would scream continuously. There wouldn't be a brief shout like this, Zhang Lan analyzed as she walked forward. Understood. Mr. Zhou remembered what Zhang Lan said. So you're saying that Bai Chiolin is a real mental patient? Not necessarily. Zhang Lan's expression was serious. Actually, I've been hiding something from you. She stopped moving and turned to Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu. According to internet rumors, this haunted house is really haunted. Haunted? You're trying to say Bai Chiolin is a ghost? Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu stopped together. You're kidding, right? Who would believe that in this day and age? I also don't think so. When a person is past their fear threshold, other than fainting, they might see illusions, Duan Yu said that, but it was obvious that she was afraid, too. She held Mr. Zhou's hand, and she looked panicked. Regardless, this haunted house is scary. The boss knows psychology. Even if there's no ghost, he can make the visitors feel like there is one. Zhang. Lan slowed down to walk beside Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu. The three turned the corner and saw the sedan at the end of the street. The curtains were open. Huang Xing and Bai Chiolin have been here. Zhang Lan did not dare go into the old home alone. For support, she dragged Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu with her. When she pushed open the front door, they saw Bai Chiolin coming out from the inner room. Stand there and don't move. Zhang Lan screamed. Where is Huang Xing? Weren't you two together earlier? How am I supposed to know? We got separated, and I also just rushed here when I heard his scream. Bai Chiolin had his hand inside his pocket, and he seemed impatient. He was offended by the interrogation. Then what did you find? Zhang Lan was very cautious. She did not take a step toward Bai Chiolin. I've searched the house inside out, but I cannot find him, Bai Chiolin said and walked toward them. Don't come any closer. Zhang Lan warned him again. Xiao Lan, we're all visitors. There's no reason to do this. Mr. Zhou tried to ease the tension. You don't understand. I've seen the review that said the boss once had his worker join the visitors to play with them. The man's insane. Zhang Lan pointed at Bai Chiolin. Something must be wrong with this man. You have to believe me. The most dangerous threat is often just standing next to you. You suspect I'm a haunted house employee? Bai Chiolin chuckled. Have you lost your mind? If not, why do you keep your left hand inside your pocket? Is it because it's painted, or is it holding some remote control? Zhang Lan had the support of the two visitors, so she was not afraid. If you dare take out your hand and there's nothing wrong with it, then I'll take back everything I've said. Bai Chiolin narrowed his eyes. You sure? Yes. I'm sure. You're definitely not a normal visitor. Zhang Lan sounded confident. Fine, as you wish. Bai Chiolin pulled out his left arm, it was only an empty sleeve. Can't a disabled person visit the haunted house? Must you tear open my wound again? Now are you satisfied? Zhang Lan was stunned. 
She really did not expect Bai Chulin's left sleeve to have nothing. Xiao Lin, you've crossed the line this time. Mr. Zhou came forward to try to calm everyone down. He smiled apologetically at Bai Chulin. This girl doesn't mean anything bad. I understand what you're feeling, I've been through something similar. This is just a misunderstanding. Duan Yu tried to persuade Zhang Lan. Stop being so suspicious. Isn't it the biggest taboo to scare yourself inside a haunted house? No, I still think something is wrong with him. The two of you, follow me. We'll investigate the house together. I suspect he's lying to us. With Zhang Lan leading the way, Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu walked into the inner room. The paper money flew into the air. Not in this room. Zhang Lan walked into the bedroom. The mattress has been moved, someone has been in here before. That by. Chilin was indeed lying. Mr. Zhou, you go and keep an eye on him outside. Don't let him out of your sight. Okay, Mr. Zhou promised. He left the room with Duan Yu. I'll need to inform Sister Mao about this. Zhang Lan took out her phone. She looked around the room before settling on the wooden bed, the only place large enough to hide someone is under the bed. The phone rang briefly before it was accepted by Sister Mao. Xiao Lan, I was about to call you, what happened to Huang Xing? We could hear his scream from here. Did some accident happen? Zhang Lan squatted beside the bed. Her voice was urgent. That Bai Chilin is suspicious. Do you remember that mental patient that we ran into at the haunted house overseas? I suspect either Bai Chilin is an employee or a madman on a rampage. Okay, I understand. Where are you now? We'll meet up with you. There's a sedan outside this old home. Zhang Lan looked below the bed, and multiple red threads intertwined forming a web of sorts. In the middle of the web was a man covered with a red wedding dress. Huang Xing. What's wrong? Xiao Lan, have you found Huang Xing? Sister Mao asked on the phone. Zhang Lan was about to reply when a cold hand suddenly reached out from underneath the bed to grab at her. Zhang Lan's phone flew from her grasp. She wanted to go grab it when she noticed a person standing beside her. The man's spine was twisted, his neck snapped but his bloody face made Zhang Lan feel familiar. Bai Chiolin. Zhang Lan was scared. She did not understand how Bai Chiolin walked into the room with Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu watching the door. She called out instinctually, Mr. Zhou. Come help me. The chopped hand silently ended the call. Hearing Zhang Lan, Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu walked into the room. However, their looks had completely changed. All three humans squeezed inside the room to give Zhang Lan triple the joy. Don't be afraid, we won't hurt you. Chapter 351, I was so scared. Xiao Lan. Say something. What's happening over there? Sister Mao screamed into the phone. However, there was no answer but the sound of chaos. Mr. Zhou. Come save me. Xiao Lan screamed before the call got cut off. Sister Mao put down the phone with a worried expression. Xiao Lan said Bai Chiolin is a crazy person. The five of them are together, Huang Xing has already been taken down, and now we've lost contact with Xiao Lan as well. What is happening over there? Didn't Xiao Lan call for Mr. Zhou to come save her at the last minute? Looks like Mr. Zhou and his wife are also victims. We should go find the couple, and then we'll know for sure, Ma Tian suggested. But we need to hurry before Bai Chiolin harms them. I don't care about that Mr. Zhou and his wife, nor do I care about your teammates. I've paid my money, so you have to help me finish my mission. The one who spoke was Brother Wong. He held his phone and kept recording everything, ignoring the rules of the haunted house. You. Ma Tian was about to say something when Sister Mao stopped him. Brother Wong, the situation has changed. There appear to be employees from the haunted house mixed in with the visitors. We need to clarify this first. What kind of danger can happen in a haunted house? 
Brother Wong used his phone to record everything inside the haunted house. Sister Mao knew that she would not be able to persuade Brother Wong, so she said, in that case, why don't you wait here? We'll be back in a bit. Before coming here, your group kept gloating, saying that going to a haunted house is like returning home. Now we're just halfway through, and you're this panicked already? Looks like my money was spent at the wrong place. Brother Wong's identity was rather unique. Sister Mao did not dare counter, so she nodded and said, that is our fault. Brother Wong, just give us three minutes. If we cannot find Huang Xing in Shaolan, we'll come back to get you. Never mind, I'll go with you. Brother Wong turned and inspected the video he had just recorded. Thank you, Brother Wong. Sister Mao dragged Ma Tian out of the old home and said, We'll wait for you outside. Once they were out the door, Ma Tian could not help but grumble, This old Wong really think we're his bodyguards. Just focus on our work. Sister Mao patted Ma Tian's hand lightly. Calm down. Sister Mao, actually, I'm curious, what is this man's identity? It's true that we did take his money, but that doesn't mean we need to be so servile toward him we don't owe him anything. He is one of the top brass at the futuristic theme park. He's well connected in the business, so there's no reason for us to offend him. Sister Mao turned to look back into the house. In that case, why did he come to New Century Park personally? Why didn't he just send a lackey? Ma Tian was confused. He thought that the man's actions were unreasonable. This is a matter between the two large theme parks it's none of our business. When Brother Wong came out, he had already pocketed his phone. Let's go. The three returned to the center of the village ere they had separated from Huang Xing's group. There are so many houses. Where should we start looking? On the phone, Xiaolan said that she was inside a house with a sedan. We should follow the route that they used when they left. The three were about to head down that way when footsteps echoed down the streets. A man and woman ran their way with fear on their faces. Mr. Zhou? Ma Tian realized something and immediately went to meet up with them. Before he could say anything, he heard Mr. Zhou's urgent calls. You have to go save Xiao Lan. That Bai Chiolin is a monster. Even from afar, Sister Mao and Ma Tian could hear the panic in Mr. Zhou's voice. Monster? Mr. Zhou gasped for air as he held Duan Yu's hand. His eyes were filled with terror, and his hair was shaking from fear. Huang Xing suggested that we split up so we could find the wedding dress faster. He went alone with Bai Chiolin, and the two of us stayed with Zhang Lan. It didn't take long for us to hear Huang Xing scream. Mr. Zhou's voice was shaking like he had just been through a traumatic event. We also heard Huang Xing scream. What happened next? Sister Mao urged him to continue. Zhang Lan had a suspicion that something was off about Bai Chiolin, she said there are internet rumors that this place is really haunted. This Bai Chiolin is either an employee, a madman, or an actual ghost. Mr. Zhou took a deep breath. Initially, we didn't believe Zhang Lan, but what happened next was too weird. Tell us, what happened? When the three of us arrived, we saw Bai Chiolin come out from one of the old houses. Xiao Lan got into an argument with him then. Mr. Zhou took out his left hand. All of you still remember Bai Chiolin kept his left hand inside his pocket, right? Xiao Lan thought he was an employee and believed his left hand that was hidden must be controlling the mechanism inside the haunted house. However, when Bai Chiolin took out his left hand, all three of us were shocked. Mr. Zhou's voice was agitated. He shook his hand a bit dramatically. That Bai Chiolin has no left hand, the wound was clean, like it had been chopped off by a knife. Based on Mr. Zhou's description, Sister Mao's group was feeling unsettled already. The scarier thing happened later. Me and Duan Yu tried to persuade Xiao Lan to leave this man, but Xiao Lan insisted on going into the house. She believed that Huang Xing was inside the house somewhere. So, the three of you entered the house? The place was big, Duan Yu and myself went to the bedroom on the right. Worried about Huang Xing's safety, Xiaolan entered the bedroom on the left alone. 
Less than one minute later, I heard Zhang Lan scream. Mr. Zhou's face was filled with guilt. I rushed toward her, but when I arrived, she had already disappeared from the room. His fingers seemed to be shaking from fear. Then we saw the scariest thing. That Bai Chiolin walked out from behind the bed carrying his broken hand. His face was twisted and his body broken, just, just like he had been in a car accident. Mr. Zhou was babbling. It was obvious that the man was traumatized. Don't panic, calm down, we're here with you. Ma Tian tried to console Mr. Zhou. It was too scary. Mr. Zhou seemed to be caught in the fear. How he looked made Sister Mao and Ma Tian worried as well. Then the five of us should stick together and go back to the house. Ma Tian was the first one to calm down. Mr. Zhou, you lead the way. After some hesitation, Mr. Zhou nodded. It's my fault for not looking after Zhang Lan. All right, come with me. Chapter 352, It's Not the Worst Situation Yet Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu walked in front, Ma Tian stayed in the middle, and Sister Mao accompanied Brother Wang at the back. Brother Wang, you have to stay close to me, Sister Mao said softly. This haunted house has a very high review online, even the 50 cent army I hired barely managed to knock its review down. Therefore, there has to be something unique about it. We've been here for about 10 minutes already. We've not run into any actors or scary props. I wonder how this haunted house operates. Do they just allow their visitors to wander about on their own? Brother Wong used his phone to record everything along the way but did not find anything that was particularly scary. The three-star scenario should be the most difficult and thus have the best design, but so far, the only thing I'm feeling is boredom. His old haunted house cannot rival the haunted house that you've designed, but we still mustn't let our guard down. Sister Mao smiled and did not dare say anything against Brother Wong. Recently, New Century Park has been showing signs of recovering, and it is all thanks to this haunted house, but I cannot understand how a haunted house is going to revive an entire park. Brother Wong walked slowly, so Sister Mao did not dare walk too fast. The group was either worried about Zhang Lan and Huang Xing's safety or concerned about something else, so they did not notice the doors of the houses on the side of the street creak open, nor did they notice the shadows that crossed the wall. In fact, none of them noticed the shadow that hung from the rooftop that trailed behind them. The good actor, Mr. Zhou, slowly led them into the grasp of the ghosts. Funeral music appeared in their ears, and the white lantern swayed, causing the light to flicker. Wait, something is not right. Ma Tian signaled for them to stop. The atmosphere is different from before, it feels like many pairs of eyes are staring at us. In that case, we better get out of here first. Mr. Zhou was even more of a scaredy cat than Ma Tian. I really don't want to go any further. We haven't found the wedding dress, and we've lost our teammates. The time limit is 40 minutes, and we're leaving in less than 10 minutes. If this is heard by other people, how are we going to continue to survive as haunted house reviewers? Sister Mao took a step forward. We'll keep moving on. At the very least, we have to see what's happening in front. After that, she turned to smile apologetically at Mr. Zhou. Please continue to lead the way, but don't worry, as long as you're with us, you'll be fine. After a little more persuasion, Mr. Zhou finally relented. Then, we'd better get a move on. I'll lead you to the place, and then we'll leave on our own. He and Duan Yu picked up speed, and Ma Tian followed close behind. The paper money on the ground flew up into the air, and there was the sound of crying. There were children giggling, and the lanterns at the end of the street were moving on their own. They moved another few meters, and footsteps came from the other street. Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu acted like they did not hear anything and continued to move forward. Ma Tian followed without paying attention. However, after they crossed the street, the funeral music sounded, and two men with their heads lowered, carrying a broken coffin between them, walked out from the other street. The coffin blocked the road. Sister Mao and Brother Wang were separated from the three by the coffin. This is. They finally saw the haunted house's actors but both Sister Mao and Brother Wong were unsettled. 
The two men were not wearing makeup, but how come they looked just like dead people? The air froze, and Sister Mao pulled on Brother Wong's sleeves as she took a step back. She felt like she had knocked into something. She turned and saw a boy with a painted face smiling right at her. Before the fear in her heart exploded, Mr. Zhou, who was at the front of the group, suddenly screamed, There he is. He killed Zhang Lan. In the middle of the courtyard stood Bai Chulin with his spine broken and his face mangled. His body covered with blood, he ran at them waving his hand madly. I'm not a killer. I'm not a killer, he screamed, but there was a hole on his throat, and his voice came out together with gushing blood. Mr. Zhou, who stood at the start of the group, turned and ran. Fear spread through the group. Ma Tian only saw by Chiolin's look before he also joined Mr. Zhou and ran. It was too scary. That was more than makeup, Bai Chiolin's head was almost falling off. Run! Mr. Zhou cried out, but a coffin blocked their way. The two pallbearers seemed to hear their signal and let go of the coffin together before they reached for Sister Mao and Brother Wong. Bang! The coffin crashed to the ground, and the coffin lid slid off. A red set of grave clothes stood up on its own. Brother Wong and Sister Mao could not get a good look at what was happening in front. She barely had the chance to recover from the fright given by the boy before the world changed. The dead people charged at them, and the grave clothes inside the coffin jumped out and walked toward them. She was not a particularly courageous person. Normally, she depended on Ma Tian and Huang Xing. This sudden accident had spooked her too much. She grabbed Brother Wang, found the closest street, and ran down it. Sister Mao. Ma Tian cried, but Sister Mao had already run away. The coffin sat between them, and the grave clothes now climbed back to stand on the coffin. Given this situation, the man did not dare get close to the coffin. Without any options, he followed Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu and ran into another street. Human faces appeared on the walls. Ma Tian did not dare to stop, the bloodied Bai Chulin was right behind him. He really looks like he has killed someone. When that thought flashed in his mind, Ma Tian's heart could not stop shaking. He had just come to visit a haunted house, how come such an unfortunate thing happened to him? A madman hid inside a haunted house and chopped off his own hand. This is insane. Don't run away. I'm not a killer. I swear. Bai Chiolin's voice came from behind him, and it was getting closer to Ma Tian. He did not dare turn back and run full speed ahead. His heart raced, and he made sure to stay close to Mr. Zhou. He soon reached his limit, and his speed slowed down. Mr. Zhou, who was in front, screamed at the top of his lungs at Ma Tian, quick! Don't stop! After turning another corner, Mr. Zhou pushed open the door to one of the homes, and he waved at Ma Tian. This way. Ma Tian followed Mr. Zhou into the room, but after closing the door, he started to regret it. Mr. Zhou. This is a dead end. My wife cannot run anymore. You want me to abandon her? Mr. Zhou helped Duan Yu into the inner room. We'll hide here for now. The urgency of the moment made Ma Tian miss the change in Mr. Zhou's reference toward Duan Yu, which had changed from girlfriend to wife. He followed them into the inner room. But there's no place to hide in here. Come, we'll hide inside the dresser. Mr. Zhou pulled the bedroom dresser open, and the three crawled into it. The door closed. There were three people inside the small space, but Ma Tian did not feel warmth. If anything, it felt like he had fallen into an icy cave. Something's not right. Shush. Mr. Zhou glared at Ma Tian. I've closed the front door, the madman probably won't know we're hiding here. The moment he finished, the front door creaked open. The sound was close to shattering Ma Tian's heart. How can the monster know we're in here? Mr. Zhou's face was filled with terror, but he soon recovered. He probably just came in here to take a look. This time, before he even finished, the door of the inner room was pushed open. Ma Tian's heart went to his throat, and his breathing became uneven. Don't panic. 
he definitely wouldn't know we're hiding here. Mr. Zhou was like a fortune teller because Bai Chiolin was heard stepping into the bedroom and stopped before the dresser. Ma Tian's face blanched, and he held his breath from fear of being discovered. Don't be scared. Now is not the worst situation. At least there are three of us humans visitors facing one ghost. Mr. Zhou's voice changed. But if there were three ghosts chasing one human visitor, then you should be afraid. Hearing that, a thought crossed Ma Tian's mind. How did Mr. Zhou know there was a wooden dress in this bedroom? Other houses did not have dressers, and this was the only exception. An indescribable terror filled his head, and it made every hair on his body stand on end. Chapter 353, Ball Blowing Bubbles His Calves Weakened, and he felt like his energy was drained from his body. Ma Tian did not dare move his gaze as he felt the two visitors beside him changing. The footsteps got closer. He looked through the gap, and the teetering by Chiolin used his hand to press against the dresser door. Just as Ma Tian thought Bai Chiolin would open the dresser, Bai Chiolin took out a key and took his time to lock the dresser. Seeing this, Ma Tian understood everything before he fainted. The three of you, are all ghosts. His scream echoed through Coffin Village, and Brother Wong as well as Sister Mao heard it as they raced down the street. Ma Tian is the most stable of us all. To be able to make him scream like that, it must have been something really scary. Sister Mao's heart fell. Five of them had entered, and in less than fifteen minutes, three of them had already disappeared. The scariest thing was, even now, she had no idea what had happened to her partners. Cold sweat ran down her forehead. She was different from Yi Xiaoxin. She was not that courageous a person, which was why she formed a haunted house reviewer group. Your friends don't seem that reliable. Brother Wang was not that physically fit so he stopped running after a while. It's this haunted house that's too scary. Sister Mao dropped her disguise. She stopped wasting energy to pretend to be cute. It was hard when her mind was filled with various scary images. Let's leave this place first. There's no need to sacrifice our lives for the sake of face. Agreed. Sister Mao held Brother Wong as they returned to the center of the village. Looking at the branching paths, they were stunned. Which is the road that we took when we arrived? Brother Wong, that's not the problem. When we arrived, there weren't so many paths. Sister Mao felt like crying. Calm down, don't forget what you do for a living. Brother Wong took out his phone. Thankfully, I took those pictures and videos. He looked through the files and found the road that looked rather similar to the one they had taken when they arrived. Should be this one. The two walked down that road, but the further they walked, the more they felt it was not right. When we entered the village, it only took us several minutes to reach the center of the village. How come it feels like now we're walking deeper into the village? Sister Mao looked at Brother Wong's phone. Are we on the correct path? As time went on, the pure terror of Coffin Village slowly revealed itself. The white lanterns released a faded red light, and things started to change. We're really on the wrong path? Brother Wong compared the road to his video. The path really did look to the one on his phone initially, but the more they walked down it, the more different it became. We should turn back to the village center and select another path. That might not be such a good idea. Sister Mao grabbed Brother Wong's hand and led him into a nearby courtyard. They had just hidden themselves when children could be heard singing. Two boys with blood-red mask ran past the front door. They looked to be seven or eight, and they sounded like innocent boys. However, put in this environment, it just felt creepy. They seemed to have left. Sister Mao wanted to look outside but was stopped by Brother Wong. Don't do it. What if the two boys are hiding behind the door? If this place is as immoral as you said, they might do something like that. But we cannot stay here forever. Sister Mao tightened her clothes. Brother Wong, have you noticed the temperature dropping? Not really, you're probably too nervous. Brother Wong was very careful. He used his phone to look around. We should inspect this courtyard to make sure it's safe. 
The white lanterns gave off a red light, and there was a strange smell in the air. The soil was moving, and the dead locust trees swayed lightly. Is this some kind of mechanism? Brother Wong looked at the locust tree and used his hand to push it. He just wanted to see what kind of mechanism was responsible for moving it, but the locust tree fell with a slight push. The material used for the prop sure is unreliable. The moment Brother Wong finished, Sister Mao pulled him back. Brother Wong, look under the tree. There was a hole underneath the dead locust tree, and a body's legs were poking out. What kind of design is this? Brother Wong and Sister Mao did not expect something to be buried underneath the tree. The tree is just a normal locust tree, there's no mechanism connected to it. Was it the legs that caused the tree to move? So, the mechanism is this body that is buried under the tree? Brother Wong looked at the mannequin buried in the hole, and his curiosity to inspect it closer was silenced. He walked away from the hole. This is such mad design. Sister Mao followed behind Brother Wong, holding his arm. Should we enter the house? Let me think. Brother Wong gripped the phone, feeling afraid. The two stopped in the middle of the courtyard when they suddenly heard a splash, like a fish jumping out of the water. The surroundings had been so quiet that it was difficult for them to not notice this. The sound seems to have come from the water barrel. Sister Mao hid behind Brother Wong. She seemed to have forgotten her identity as a haunted house reviewer, and given the fact that her makeup had already been ruined, she just looked slightly better than a ghost. Come, let's go take a look. Brother Wong neared the water barrel, and even when he got closer, he could not spot anything weird, it just looked like a normal water receptacle. However, there was a white ball floating on the surface. I don't remember anything floating on the water when we came in. Brother Wong was confused. Where did the ball come from? The light was too dim for him to see clearly. It was not until they were standing next to the water barrel that they heard something that sounded like bubbles. The ball is making bubbles in the water? Brother Wong leaned forward and turned on the flashlight on his phone. He shone it at the water barrel. The light cut through the water and lit up the round ball. Their mouths fell open. It was not a ball but a human head soaked in the water until it had become white. With a splash, the ghost jumped out from the barrel. The sudden light from the phone seemed to give him plenty of displeasure. The bloated face rushed toward the two visitors. Brother Wong was so spooked that he turned and ran. However, he only took several steps before he tripped on something. He looked at the ground, and the body that originally had its leg up now had its head upwards, poking through the soil. The face smiled at him like it was trying to crawl out from the hole. Brother Wong crawled toward the front door like his life depended on it. But at this moment, the sound of children singing came from the front door. Little old mister, sitting before the funeral, his face stern. Adults and babies sat watching. The son's legs were sore from kneeling. Chapter 354, They Are the Ghosts The red door was pushed open, and the two boys bounded into the courtyard. They continued to sing their weird lullaby, and blood slid down their faces. When they got closer, Brother Wong realized that the red was not from paint but a mask that was carved into their faces. Don't come any closer. Brother Wong collapsed to the ground. His hands reached back, hoping to grab something to use as a shield. His fingertips touched something cold. He turned back to look, and the mannequin that had been half buried in the ground earlier had crawled out and was resting beside him. Brother Wong called for Sister Mao to help him but Sister Mao was facing quite a big problem herself. The bloated ghost had climbed out of the water barrel, and water dripped to the ground, his swollen face staring at the two visitors inside the courtyard. A shrill female scream escaped her throat. Sister Mao was scared until she lost her rationality. She abandoned Brother Wong and raced out of the house like crazy. The lanterns on the side of the street elicited a red light. The originally creepy village changed in several minutes, it felt like she had arrived at hell. Two boys ran out from the courtyard. The eerie lullaby filled her ears, and Sister Mao raced for her life. Help! As a haunted house reviewer, 
she was screaming for help inside a haunted house, that was something Sister Mao had not expected before she arrived. Her speed slowed down, and the sedan kids caught up to her. Despair almost swallowed her whole. How come this road is so unending? Someone come and help me. After turning the corner, Sister Mao saw the red grave clothes standing in the middle of the road. The clothes stood upright, and when it discovered Sister Mao, it chased after her without warning. Her throat was raw from screaming. Sister Mao focused on running. Fortunately, the Lord rewards hard work. Sister Mao saw light at the end of the road. At the end of the other street, there were several dim oil lamps. Even though the light was weak, they managed to chase the darkness away. That should be the exit. Sister Mao tried her best to run toward the light, but as she ran, she realized that something was wrong. Those lights did not seem fixed to anything, they seemed to be moving on their own. The lights are floating in the air? With Monster chasing behind her, Sister Mao did not have the time to consider these details. She ran another few meters before she saw the lights for what they were. Pale faces floated behind the lights, each oil lamp was hanging from the mouth of a floating human head. Sister Mao's brain had gone into shutdown. Her body continued to move for several meters due to inertia. Just as she was about to charge into the group of skull lanterns, a hand reached out to grab her. Follow me, the man said harshly. He pulled Sister Mao into one of the old homes and led her to jump through the window. Who are you? Shush, it's very dangerous here. The voice was rather familiar, so Sister Mao allowed him to drag her for two streets. After they ran away from the monsters, they finally stopped. They hid behind the door, and Sister Mao turned to look at the man who saved her from certain death. Her gaze moved up, but when she saw that face, her face quivered. Bai Chiolin? Will you please quiet down? Bai Chiolin hissed at her. Why? Is it that surprising to see me? Sister Mao's brain was a puddle, and she staggered back. But Xiao Lan said on the phone. It was me who hurt her, right? Bai Chiolin said coldly. You've all been tricked by the dirty things inside this haunted house. Dirty things? Sister Mao looked at Bai Chiolin with suspicion. When the five of them had gone to find Zhang Lan earlier, the pallbearers had left the coffin in the middle of the road, splitting the group in two. At the time, Sister Mao's attention had been focused on the pallbearers and the sedan kids, so she did not know what happened on the other side of the street. You might not believe what I have to say next, but it's all true. Bai Chiolin's throaty voice made her uncomfortable. The couple with you are ghosts. You're saying Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu are ghosts? Sister Mao widened her eyes, having trouble believing it. This haunted house has been in operation for many years already, and there have always been rumors of ghost hauntings. Bai Chiolin's pupils shook. Several months ago, a couple decided to commit a suicide pact since their love wasn't blessed by their families. The location was this haunted house. Suicide pact? Sister Mao leaned against the wall, her legs could no longer support her body. Initially, everything was fine, but slowly, more and more visitors had visions of that couple. It appears like their souls have stuck around the haunted house after they died. Bai Chiolin's voice was scary. Huang Xing was tricked by that couple. I wanted to save him, but I was too late. But on the phone, Zhang Lan said you're the one who harmed her, and she asked Mr. Zhou for help before the call was cut off. Before Sister Mao could finish, Bai Chiolin interrupted her. You people are so dumb. Don't you know how to use your brain when you receive her call? Why would the call be ended right after Zhang Lan called for Mr. Zhou's help? Why didn't they end the call earlier? They had to wait until Zhang Lan pointed me as the murderer first. Why is that? The more Bai Chiolin argued, the louder he became. Sister Mao was led in circles by Bai Chiolin, and she started to buy his story. At the time, I just wanted to tell Zhang Lan everything. I purposely avoided the couple, but Zhang Lan misunderstood me, thinking I wanted to harm her. Bai Chiolin's expression was serious. All I wanted to do was help, 
but my good intentions were taken advantage of by that ghost couple. Every time Bai Chiolin spoke, it heightened the terror in Sister Mao's heart. Her conviction started to shake. So, those two are the real ghosts. It's unsafe here, I'll lead you out. Before giving Sister Mao any chance to think, Bai Chiolin opened the front door. The two ran down the street, and when they reached the end of the street, two figures turned the corner and stood under the light of the red lantern. Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu. Sister Mao. Mr. Zhou was stunned, and his expression changed within seconds. With his finger pointing at Bai Chiolin, he pleaded, get away from him. You're standing next to a ghost. The desperation in Mr. Zhou's voice unsettled Sister Mao. Both parties said that the other was the ghost, who was she going to believe? Her footsteps moved involuntarily forward. Sister Mao still believed Mr. Zhou a bit more. Don't go. The ghost couple are lying to you. Bai Chiolin stood where he was. His tone was sharp but shaking like he too was afraid. Hearing that, Sister Mao started to hesitate. Sister Mao, come over here. Mr. Zhou screamed at the top of his lungs. Then he suddenly remembered something. That madman ran out from the mental hospital. He chopped off his left hand. Tell him to show you his left arm. One side was a couple that committed suicide inside a haunted house, the other was the convicted patient who chopped out his hand, and Sister Mao stood in the middle. She did not know who to trust. Who among them is lying? Who should I believe? Chapter 355 They fell before I did anything, believe me, they are both ghosts. Don't go over there. Bai Chiolin moved one step forward. Come with me before it's too late. Sister Mao, you have to think this through. He was around when the accidents happened to Zhang Lan and Huang Xing. Mr. Zhou's face was covered with fear. Quickly come to us. Sister Mao was tormented by the opposing voices coming from both sides. This was more than just simple fear. Terror had seeped into her bones, just the thought of it sent chills up her spine. Heaven on one side and hell on the other, one wrong step and everything's over. She gritted his teeth and finally came to her decision. Perhaps because Mr. Zhou had said more words and was the friendlier party before all hell broke loose, Sister Mao chose to nudge toward Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu. You will regret this. Bai Chiolin moved backward like he was ready to run. Seeing how determined Bai Chiolin was to leave, Sister Mao's heart started to shake again. If he wants to harm me, he wouldn't leave like this. Am I really making the wrong choice? Sister Mao looked at Mr. Zhou and his wife, and she suddenly remembered that both Bai Chiolin and Mr. Zhou were there when accidents happened to Huang Xing and Xiao Lan, but when Ma Tian was caught, only Mr. Zhou and his wife were with him. I know the truth already. Sister Mao was covered with cold sweat, it felt like she had just taken a jaunt around the gate of hell. Wait a minute. Sister Mao ran to Bai Chiolin. I'm going with you. Now you choose to believe me? Bai Chiolin did not turn around, and his voice was cold. I've always believed you. Sister Mao tried to argue to regain Bai Chiolin's confidence. Bai Chiolin slowed down but still did not turn around. Aren't you afraid that I'm a crazy murderer? Now is not the time for that, they'll catch up soon. Sister Mao had tears in her eyes. I really believe you. Please, take me to the exit. Earlier I must have been possessed by the ghosts, that's the only reason I hesitated. Possessed by the ghosts? Bai Chiolin stopped. Sister Mao finally caught up to him, and he slowly turned around. His neck snapped, mouth and nose bleeding, Bai Chiolin had a twisted smile on his face. Are you talking about a ghost like myself? Sister Mao forced out a scream from her sore throat. She had lost her soul, and her body turned to run toward Mr. Zhou. Save me. Save me. Sister Mao rushed toward Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu, her mind completely blank. I told you he's a ghost, but you refuse to listen. Come with us. Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu led Sister Mao into an alley. They ran for a while before Sister Mao saw the end of the road, 
It was a wall. Wait, is this a dead end? She turned to look at Mr. Zhou and Duan Yu beside her, and she lost the ability to speak. Of course, where else would dead people lead you but a dead end? Mr. Zhou's black shirt started to leak with blood, forming floral patterns. Duan Yu was even scarier, her body split into blocks like she could shatter at any moment. I only said Bai Chilin was a ghost, but have I said that we aren't? Her eyes rolled backward, and Sister Mao felt it was a nice thing to faint. Inspecting the makeup on his face, Chen Gu, who was waiting at the entrance of Coffin Village, finally entered the scenario. It's time to add some pressure now that twenty minutes have passed. Boss Chen decided to do this personally, but once he stepped into the village, several shadows crawled out and entered the comic. What happened? He flipped open the comic, and Uncle Yen drew five spots on the black paper, signaling the five locations where the group had fainted. It has already ended? All five of them got taken down already? Chen Gu ran into the nearest old home in Uncle Yan's drawing. He first pulled out Zhang Lan and Huang Xing before finding the unconscious Ma Tian with foam on his lips. Then, at the end of the alley, he found Sister Mao, who had lost her fake eyelashes. But only twenty minutes have passed, right? What the f asterisk CK happened? When Chen Gu visited the old building, he did not think that the three ghosts were that scary, even though they were exceptional actors. The three of them definitely could manage a whole scenario on their own, but pretending to be visitors can't be repeated too often. I'll consider this a special experience for the first batch of visitors. Putting away the comic, Chen Gu found the place where Brother Wang lied unconscious. Different from other visitors, the phone beside Brother Wang was still replaying the video. When he and Sister Mao were trying to escape, they had used the recording to find the way back. Another content stealer. Initially, Chen Gu did not pay much attention, but after Director Luo put out the 200,000 reward, there had been people paying for information on his haunted house online. The newer the information, the higher the price. However, there were not many who had the guts to enter a three-star scenario. After all, even if they earned the money, they had to be alive to enjoy it. Picking up the phone, Chen Gu deleted the video. Just as he was ready to place the phone back in Brother Wang's pocket, he noticed the many videos and pictures of a different theme park. The theme park's design was futuristic, and in comparison, New Century Park was old and traditional. Isn't this the futuristic theme park? Why would the man have the designs of a theme park on his phone? Chen Gu glanced at Brother Wang. Be it from age group or presence, this man is different from the other members of the reviewer group. He should be someone from the futuristic theme park. Looks like the haunted house has gotten famous enough to attract the attention of competition. New Century Park was on its last legs, even director Luo planned to close the place, but recently, due to the existence of the haunted house, the theme park is experiencing its second wind. It's understandable for them to come to feel out the competition. Chen Gu came to this conclusion after looking through a few more videos. Good idea, but you started with a three-star scenario. You sure don't value your life. Chen Gu took out his phone and aimed it at Brother Wang's screen. He took down everything that he could use in the future. Sister Mao hired a 50-cent army to bring the rating of the haunted house down, and there are groups bringing up discussion of New Century Park online. Could the culprit be the people from the futuristic theme park? Chen Gu knew fairly well that Jiujiang was only so big, so the two large theme parks would have to fight for visitors. Based on current situation, New Century Park is still on the losing end, but thankfully, there's one more month until the official opening of their park. After Chen Gu removed all the pictures, he returned the phone to Brother Wang and dragged him out of the scenario. I'll need to report this to Director Luo. He probably also realized that someone has been trying to bring theme park down. All five visitors had fainted, and Chen Gu could not haul all of them out at once. So, he could only drag Sister Mao and Zhang Lan out with him first. They're so heavy. Looks like, in the future, I'll scare them until they're half unconscious so that they can still walk out on their own. When Uncle Su saw Chen Gu come out dragging two women with him, his eyes twitched. He stopped selling tickets and ran over to help. 
Get the stretchers from the resting tent. Where is the doctor on standby? Go get the man. Just tell them there's another accident at the haunted house. They know what to do. Uncle Su and the workers helped Sister Mao and Zhang Lan get onto the stretcher. They were about to leave when Chen Gu suddenly grabbed Uncle Su's shoulders. What is it? Uncle Su's forehead was covered with sweat. He was in the hurry to send the visitors to the doctor. Are there more stretchers in the resting tent? Chin Gu raised three fingers. Three people fainted? Uncle Su's expression fell, he was about to say something when he was stopped by Chin Gu. I mean, I need three more stretchers. Chapter 356, Promise Me Something Uncle Su's hands shook, and he almost dropped Sister Mao. Three more stretchers? But only five visitors entered the scenario. Not only Uncle Su, but all the nearby visitors took a step back. I also didn't expect haunted house reviewers to be so easily scared. Chin Gu shrugged helplessly. Help me get the stretchers here and I'll go get the rest of the visitors. After saying that, Chin Gu turned to walk into the haunted house, leaving a group of visitors that were stunned. Five people entered, and all five fainted, meaning that the three-star scenario has a 100% chance of making people faint. The team who planned to challenge the third sick hall stopped to have a discussion. Without refunding the ticket, they ran to the spot in the sunlight. They formed a circle and started to reassess the danger of challenging third sick hall. Both the third sick hall and coffin village are three-star scenarios, so I think we need to reconsider this. The one who spoke was Yang Chen, who had met Chen Gu before. This student from Jiujiang's medical university seemed to be the core member of the team. All the information on the third sick hall was mostly rumors. Apparently, they were claimed to be testimonies from visitors who had visited the third sick hall themselves, but the authenticity can be challenged. I just asked an insurance company, there's no claim for accidents that happen inside the haunted house. The risk is still too high, we haven't even cleared the two-star scenario perfectly, so I personally suggested that we finish the two-star scenario before we even consider three-star scenario. But someone has to take the first step. We stayed up late until 3 a.m. to discuss this last night to come up with 11 emergency plans. Are you willing to give up now that we're at the door? Let's have a vote. Yang Chen raised his arm. I don't agree that we should challenge a three-star scenario today. I support you. The group of 13 formed a circle under the sun. They seemed like they were discussing something important, and the nearby visitors thought they were quite mysterious. Seven votes for no, two surrendered their votes, for yes. Majority wins, so I announce that we'll be giving up on this challenge for today. The team members returned to the resting tent to discuss the next course of action. Other people had no idea what they were up to, but they felt the group look rather impressive. By then, the five visitors had been retrieved from the haunted house. They were hauled onto the stretchers and sent to the medical room by the park workers. The park workers are getting more and more professional. Last time, when Fei Yuliang fainted, it took them more than half an hour to send him to the hospital. They're much faster now. Chen Gu saw the fear on the other visitors' faces as they saw the workers walk away with the stretchers, so he consoled them. Don't worry, our haunted house come with full medical protection. We've already come to an agreement with a famed hospital, so you can visit without worry. It'll be fine. Part of the visitors did feel better hearing that, but others were confused. Why would a haunted house have an agreement with a hospital? These were not supposed to be places that were related. After the promotion done by the five reviewers, many visitors who intended to visit a three-star scenarios all retreated, and the terror of three-star scenarios rose in their heart once more. That was probably human nature. Thing that they could not get, they wanted it the most, places that they could not go to, they were curious about it. After making sure there were no visitors, Chin Gu returned to the haunted house to look through the pictures on his phone. As he looked through them, his eyes turned serious. Gu Feiyu and Su Wan were each responsible for a one-star scenario, and the two-star scenario had the twenty or so mannequins. Only when visitors wanted to challenge three-star scenario would Chin Gu follow behind them to protect them from the shadows. 
The afternoon flew by. It was 6 p.m., but there were still many visitors at the haunted house. In comparison to the service provided by the haunted house, the ticket price was not expensive, so some of the visitors wanted to try out other scenarios after they finished one. This was one of the reasons the lines in front of the haunted house had not reduced. The haunted house operated until 6.30 p.m., and Chungu stopped selling tickets due to security concerns. After sending away the last batch of visitors, Su Wan and Gu Feiyu strode out from their scenarios. Nice work today. Chen Gu helped Su Wan remove her makeup and called the two workers to join them in the dressing room. We'll have a short meeting. Starting with Xiao Gu, today, you've done a wonderful job. I didn't receive any complaint from the visitors, meaning you have talent for this job. It's because I have a good boss who knows how to teach. Xiao Gu removed the Dr. Skullcracker's outfit and placed it neatly back at the corner of the room. Playing a ghost for a long time inside a haunted house may take a toll on your psyche, so stay away from oily food and depressing movies or drama. Let yourself get used to the environment first. Yes, boss. Okay, you can go now. If you come across any problem in your life, you can come to me. I hope you won't treat the haunted house only as a working space. This is also a home that you can come back to, Chingu said flatly, but it was filled with warmth and strength. Xiao Gu nodded heavily, feeling truly touched. After Gu Feiyu left, Chingu started to remove his own makeup. Xiao Wan, have you noticed any changes in the haunted house recently? No, but. Su Wan sat beside Chingu. Boss, I feel the biggest change has happened to you. Me? Chen Gu turned to look at Su Wan. What kind of changes you're talking about? I can't put my finger on it. Su Wan passed a makeup sponge to Chen Gu and sat quietly. For some reason, I feel like you're different from before. Perhaps I'm getting older. Chen Gu smiled as he continued to take off the makeup. He looked at himself in the mirror and suddenly said, Xiao Wan, on the off chance that the haunted house closes down, will you promise me one thing? What is it? I'll tell you when the day comes. Chen Gu let Su Wan go, and he cleaned up the haunted house. When he was done, it was 7 p.m. He locked the door to the haunted house and headed for Theme Park's office building. Due to the recent business at the park, Director Luo had moved into the place. He knocked on the door and realized that Director Luo was Skyping with someone. He was in formal wear and sounded like he was discussing something very important. After several minutes, the meeting stopped. Director Luo waved at Chen Gu. Xiao Chen, are you here for those few visitors? I've handled that for you. Just be more careful in the future. It's about something else. Chen Gu took out his own phone and showed Director Luo the pictures that he had taken. Chapter 357, Who Are You? Of the five who fainted, one of them participated in the design of the futuristic theme park. Chen Gu closed the door and gave his phone to Director Luo. After some comparison, it's quite obvious that a third-generation theme park like our own is still lacking. Every picture featured a different scene that combined imagination and incredible settings. Director Luo gasped with surprise when he saw the pictures. Honestly, if he was given a choice, he would also visit the futuristic theme park. Did you knock them out after discovering this man's real identity? Director Luo asked without taking his eyes from the phone. That was just an accident. I'm not trying to accuse you. In fact, I think you've done a great job. However, I'm worried you didn't consider the consequences of your actions. Director Luo put down the phone. After all, every single picture in here can be considered business secrets. Don't worry, I took the picture on my phone, so there won't be any data trace. Plus, I grabbed his phone through the protection of my sleeve, so even if he goes to the police, there will not be actual proof. Chen Gu sounded like this was everyday stuff for him. Director Zhou was silent. Since Chen Gu had even considered his fingerprints, what else could he say? Lately, there has been an online presence trying to slander the haunted house by hiring people to leave fake reviews. Initially, I didn't think too much of it until the appearance of this man. Chen Gu moved the slideshow forward. 
Look at these messages. They're behind it. Director Luo nodded. The futuristic theme park has several shareholders. I believe one of them realized our threat and thus come up with these underhanded tactics. Don't you worry about this, I'll take care of it. You just focus on building your haunted house. Director Luo, there are a few more pictures. Perhaps due to popularity of our haunted house, they decided to add their own haunted house, the authentic 4D haunted house. It was at this point that Director Luo's face shifted. They also wanted to open a haunted house? That's right. They plan to build a haunted house that combines virtual reality and true reality. I've seen the preview online, the visitors claim it was like living in a horror movie. How does it compare to your own haunted house? Chin Ji's haunted house was New Century Park's main attraction, so if it lost by comparison, New Century Park had nothing to compete with. Those things are ultimately fake, mine is 100% real. Chin Ji's haunted house would never shy from comparison. I feel like you're hiding something behind your words, but never mind, just give it your all. I'll support you. Director Luo continued to flip through the pictures. When he saw the last one, his brows slightly creased, but they quickly relaxed. You also took this picture from his phone? The picture was of a staff gathering. When Chin Gu took the picture, it had been for the benefit of his own employees. If they saw these faces, there was no need to hold back. Yes, is there anything wrong with the picture? Just saw an old friend. Director Luo returned the phone to Chin Gu. As long as you have confidence in your haunted house, there's no reason for us to be afraid of them. Don't need to worry about the visitor number because we have something they don't. He stood up to look out the window at the park. We shouldn't limit ourselves to Jiujiang. The uniqueness of your haunted house will carry us forward. With enough promotion, everywhere that has access to the internet will have potential customers. In terms of business management, Director Luo was much more experienced than Chen Gu. They can shift according to the trend, but that doesn't mean that we have to stand still either. I have something for you to see. Director Luo turned the laptop around, signaling for Chen Gu to scan the QR code that appeared on screen. What's this? After scanning, Chen Gu realized his phone had downloaded an app called Haunted House. After clicking on it, it provided a small description of each scenario with the number of visitors that had tried it, the pass rate, and the time limit. This is the app that I asked people to design for you. Director Luo pulled out a wristband from the drawer. Put this on. Chen Gu put on the band and paired it with the app. He opened the personal page, and it revealed his heart rate, blood pressure, and many more statistics. The data might not be 100% accurate but at least it will be able to fool many people. The real purpose of the wristband is digital location. Each band has its own code, and if a visitor faints inside your haunted house, you only need to click on the computer to find them. Director Luo was probably afraid of how Chen Gu was going about doing things, so he stressed the importance of the digital location. The app can be used on its own or bound with the wristband. How to operate it, I'll discuss with Ol Su. We'll come to a decision within three days. This app that was designed for the haunted house had many uses. The visitors could use it to check the ranking and the latest clear rate. There were also previews for new scenarios and inside guides. This app was more like a community project for all haunted house lovers. Director Luo, you've read my mind. I've thought about designing something like this for my haunted house. Chen Gu had big ambitions. The three-star scenario was just the beginning, his goal was to build the first terror-themed theme park in the country. In that case, I'll give you that wristband, the code is 000. Director Luo smiled. Perhaps it was Chen Ji's influence, but he had felt younger in spirit recently. Chen Gu left Director Luo's office at 8 p.m. With Director Luo's full support, he did not have anything to worry about. The futuristic park will open in a month, I don't have that much time left. Chin Gu returned to the haunted house to move the recorder, hammer, and comic into his backpack before calling Gao Ru Shui. He planned to meet Gao Ru Shui that night, 
and perhaps he might discover a clue related to Zhejiang Medical University's underground morgue. The phone rang for several seconds, but no one answered. Chen Gu hung up and tried again. I did promise to meet her tonight, did something happen to her? There was still no answer. Chen Gu called for the third time. If there was still no answer, he would call He San and Gao Ru Shue's father. Did something really happen to her? Chen Gu waited for nine seconds. Just as he wanted to give up, the call connected. He held his breath but did not say anything. He waited for the other person to speak first. After one second, an unfamiliar female voice said, Who are you? Chapter 358 Their Real Purpose Chen Gu heard this female voice for the first time. It sounded almost the same age as Gao Ru Shui. The tone was laced with impatience and a very well-hidden resentment. I'm Gao Ru Shui's friend. I wish to ask her out for dinner tonight, Chen Gu said randomly. Where is she? She's washing her hair. I'll have her call you back later. Thank you. After hanging up, Chen Gu lay on his bed. If this was a normal date, then it's understandable for Gao Ru Shui to prepare but she was obviously in a panic, and asking me out is to resolve the issue with her roommate. Under this circumstances, with her personality, she wouldn't have wasted time with her appearance. Chen Gu had a feeling something bad had happened to Gao Ru Shui. Five minutes later, Gao Ru Shui's call came. After picking up, the girl's familiar voice said, I'm preparing to leave now. The door closed, and she sounded like she was in the corridor. The amount of background noise had decreased. Where shall we meet tonight? Name a place, I'll go there now. Chen Gu relaxed slightly when he heard it was Gao Ru Shui's voice. She sounded fine. Why don't you come to our school? Come in from the western gate. It normally isn't guarded. We'll meet behind the old education block. Gao Ru Shui seemed to have walked into the bathroom. Come quick. I keep finding weird stuff about that two roommates. What happened? During school, Lu Xianxian collapsed on the table and slept for the whole afternoon. She explored the underground building at night, so it's normal for her to sleep in the day. Chen Gu did not think there was any problem with that. If she was just sleeping, I wouldn't have been so worried. Gao Ru Shui lowered her voice, feeling very unsafe. During the second class, my pen fell to the ground. Just as I bent down to pick it up, I accidentally saw that Lu Xianxian wasn't actually sleeping, her eyes were wide open, staring at the mirror inside her drawer. A mirror? Yes, to be precise, she was looking at herself inside the mirror. Gao Ru Shui reconstructed the situation for Chen Gu. Her eyes were bloodshot like she hated the person in the mirror very much, but wasn't it herself inside the mirror? Your roommates sound like they are possessed. Why don't you move back home for now? Okay, but I'll meet you at school first. I still have many things to inform you. After the call was ended, Chen Gu was about to leave when his phone rang again. This time, it was from Captain Yen. Such a coincidence. At a time like this. Chen Gu accepted the call, and before he could say anything, he heard Captain Yen say, Come to the police station now. I have something very important to tell you. Now? Yes. It's very important. Captain Yen sounded very serious, so Chen Gu promised, I'll be there in a minute, but I have something else to do tonight. I cannot stay for long. It won't take too much of your time. After ending the call, Chen Gu called for a taxi to get to the police station. He called Gao Ru Shui on his way there, but this time, there was no answer. Chen Gu reached that station at around 8 p.m., and once he stepped through the door, he realized that the atmosphere was wrong. The officer on duty recognized Chen Gu and led him directly to Captain Yan's office. He pushed the door open, and other than Captain Yan, there were two other people in the room, Ol Wei and Master Bai. The door closed, and Captain Yan signaled for Chen Gu to take a seat. Last night, the three of you entered the mountain to find the two kids but when my men went into the mountains this morning, they followed your directions, but they could not find that village after searching for six hours. Last night, it was Master Bai who led the way. You will have to ask him about this. 
Coffin Village had been unlocked, and Shingu temporarily had no reason to return to the ghost village. My directions are correct. Master Bai leaned against the chair, feeling better after a good night's sleep. I saw the pictures taken by the other officers. The route is correct, Coffin Village is just beyond that valley. But the problem is there is no village after crossing that valley. Captain Yen sat at the table. What happened to the three of you last night? I cannot remember clearly, but there is indeed a village, Ol Wei said with his head lowered. He had done a good deed, but he looked so despondent. The children have been saved. There's no rush to find that village. Chen Gu stood to the side. He did not even sit because he wanted to leave as soon as possible. If it was just that, then we could have investigated slowly, but the issue is. Captain Yen took out an evidence bag from his drawer, it had a gun inside it. Always gun had a shot missing. According to ballistics, the gun was used last night, but Olway has no memory of it. Do you know what this means? Chen Gu shook his head. He understood it was Olway who fired the gun, but as for why he fired and what happened then, Chen Gu had no idea. Olway is an experienced officer, something must have been intense to make him shoot the gun. Did you guys encounter such danger last night? Captain Yen kept his eyes on Chen Gu, waiting for him to answer. Chen Gu glanced at Master Bai and said, no. Hearing him, Master Bai's tightened fists slowly relaxed. Then do you have any memory of Ol Wei firing this gun? I did hear the gunshot when I was at the village, but at the time, I wasn't with Ol Wei and Master Bai. The gun is the most important to an officer, it cannot be touched by outsiders. Now, we can confirm the gun was shot once. Whether the shooter was Ol Wei or not, this is serious business. If you have any clues, you have to tell us. Captain Yen looked at Ol Wei, who had his face lowered, and sighed. The doctor said that Ol Wei is suffering from temporary memory loss due to trauma, but no matter what, I'll get to the bottom of this. Understood. Chen Gu nodded, and after some hesitation, he added, Captain Yen, Zhou Jiang's children's home's Dr. Chen was also at the village. He had been following us. This might be related to him. A Bolo one is out on the man. The result should be coming back soon. As he said so, Captain Yen rummaged through the drawer, and seconds later, he took out a map with pictures pasted on it. Actually, there's a second reason I called for you. Chen Gu examined the map, and his pupils narrowed. There had been five eye-gauging cases around Jiujiang over the past two days, and if the crime scenes were all joined together, they aligned with New Century Park at the center. All the cases are surrounding my haunted house. Is this some kind of ritual by the Ghost Story Society? Chapter 359 The phone Chen Gu had run into two Ghost Story Society's members at Coffin Village. This meant that one last member remained in Jiujiang to toy with the police. Initially, Chen Gu thought the cases were related to Coffin Village, but it looked like the society's real target was him all along. Zhang Ye and Su Yin were both asleep, so the only specter Chen Gu had left was the lesser red specter Yen Danian, but technically speaking, Uncle Yen could only use support skills. The society realized my limit at Coffin Village. They now know that Zhang Ye is asleep, this situation is very bad for me. Chen Gu looked at the map on the table silently. The situation was bad for him, but it was worse for the Ghost Story Society. Wu Fei had been killed by the ghost inside the door, but the black phone did not show that he had died. This was probably due to the detail where the ghost appeared to be quite excited after she picked up the black robes that Wu Fei wore. After some consideration, Chen Gu suspected that Wu Fei had hidden a part of his consciousness on a scapegoat and then placed that scapegoat somewhere else. The female ghost was so happy after she found the black robe, which meant that the robe was hiding something important. If it was a scapegoat then, falling into the hands of that female ghost would be a fate worse than death for Wu Fei. The society's plan at Coffin Village had failed completely, and they had lost a member. There were two members left. One of them was under great investigation by the police, and the other had gotten into a fierce fight with Dr. Chen at Coffin Village. 
Chen Gu knew that the days of the Ghost Story Society were numbered, but he was afraid that they might do something drastic when cornered. After all, these were crazies, they would do anything. Five murders surrounding New Century Park, this isn't an accident. You might be their next target. Captain Yen put the map aside. We've found the killer and we'll capture him in about three days. During this time, you'd better not stay at the park at night. Understood. Chen Gu realized this was the real reason Captain Yen called him to the station, he wanted to protect him. Captain Yen asked Chen Gu some questions, and during that process, the captain kept releasing information on the cases consciously and subconsciously. Chen Gu remembered these details in his heart. Captain Yen allowed him to leave at 9 p.m. When he exited the station, Chen Gu took out his phone, there was no record of a call or message from Gao Ru Shui. I've made her wait for so long, but she didn't once call me. Did something happen to her? Chen Gu felt like the Gao Ru Shui on the phone had acted rather weird. He hopped into the taxi and rushed to Jiujiang Medical University. Inside the cab, Chen Gu called Gao Ru Shui. Similar to before, there was no answer the first two times, and it connected on the third ring. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm at the old education block. Come quick, my roommates are getting more and more abnormal. Gao Ru Shui's voice sounded urgent like she was running to find a place to hide. If you're running into any danger, I advise you call the police immediately. The police will be able to do more for you than me. Chen Gu urged the driver to drive faster. My worry is my roommates are being possessed. Do you think the police will believe that? My two roommates are not who they were. Gao Ru Shui seemed to know many things, which was obvious from her tone. Put the police on speed dial and go somewhere crowded. I'll be there in half an hour. After hanging up, Chen Gu grabbed the phone and started to think. Whenever I call Gao Ru Shui, it'll be put through on the third ring. Also, on the phone, she was somewhere quiet. If she was in danger, why would she purposely go somewhere quiet? Sitting inside the taxi, Chen Gu called Dr. Gao and he san. At 9.30 p.m., Gao Ru Shui looked at the self-study room that had become increasingly deserted, and she called Chen Gu one more time. I'm sorry, but the number you're calling is currently busy. This was the 23rd time that she had called Chen Gu, but every time the line was busy. Did something happen to him? Gao Ru Shui borrowed her friend's phone to make the call, but there was still no answer, like the number was cursed. Last night, when the three shadows came in, I called everyone, and only Chen Ji's reply was different, but how come it has turned around completely today? Everyone else's number is fine, but only his is busy. Who is he on the phone with? Gao Ru Shui was spacing out holding the phone when someone patted her on her shoulder. Xiao Shui, let's go. It's time to go back to the bedroom. Lu Xianxian called Gao Ru Shui to come with her. She looked just like normal, be it her mannerisms or actions, even her tone and habits were perfect. However, this was the thing that scared Gao Ru Shui the most. She knew for a fact that this was not her roommate. You can go first. I still want to stay back to study. Gao Ru Shui pocketed her phone and flipped through the book on the table. You look so distracted lately. You really have a new boyfriend, don't you? Lu Xianxian sidled up to Gao Ru Shui, a familiar action, even the joke was similar to how the girl would do it normally. Her best friend sat beside her, but when Lu Xianxian neared Gao Ru Shui, her body froze involuntarily. Then, go back to the bedroom when you're done studying. I'll go back first. Lu Xianxian grabbed her book and left. When she disappeared from the room, Gao Ru Shui sighed in relief. I cannot stay at the bedroom tonight. Gao Ru Shui took out her phone to call Dr. Gao. Dad, are you home tonight? I want to come home for the night. I'm still at the hospital. I'll probably reach home at 12. Why are you suddenly coming home? My roommates have been acting strange recently. I'll tell you all about it when I reach home. Okay. Gao Ru Shui grabbed her book and water bottle as she left the room. She saw Lu Xianxian and Ma Xian talking at the stairs. 
It looked like they were waiting for her. Avoiding them, Gao Ru Shui took the stairs at the other end of the corridor. She did not return to the bedroom but hailed a taxi to head home. This is weird, how come only Chen Ji's number is unavailable? Gao Ru Shui took out her phone and called Chen Gu for the 24th time. I'm sorry, but the number you're calling is currently busy. Chapter 360, Open the Door There's Still No Answer Never mind, I'll leave school for now. A weird feeling was crawling out of Gao Ru Shui's heart. She was very nervous and saw everything as suspicious. Sir, will you drive faster? I'm in a hurry. The enclosed space caused Gao Ru Shui's breath to come short. She rolled the window down, and the wind tussled her hair. There were crowds outside milling about the street, but she did not feel one bit comforted, she kept feeling like someone was watching her from somewhere. You're a student at Jiujiang's Medical University, right? Better not go out alone at night, it's rather chaotic lately. The driver held the steering wheel and said, there have been quite a number of murders around the area recently, and the victims were found in poor state. I hear their eyes were all gouged out. I'm not trying to scare you, but before the killer is caught, you'd better stay in your school dormitory at night. The driver probably meant well, but it sounded different to Gao Ru Shui's ears. She could not stop her mind from wandering. Murders? Multiple murders? Why would he ask me to go back to the dormitory? Is he the killer? In Gao Ru Shui's eyes, the driver's normal face turned dark, and his every movement seemed to be hiding some sinister intention. Gao Ru Shui did not reply as she grabbed her phone and turned to look out the window. However, she would surreptitiously glance at the driver once in a while. Twenty minutes later, the taxi arrived at Shi Xia Hu residence. Dr. Gao had bought a home here two years ago. After paying the fare, Gao Ru Shui got out of the car quickly. It was about 10 p.m., and there were not that many people around the area. Shi Xia Hu residence could be considered a silk stocking district at Jiujiang. The environment was nice, and Shi Xia Lake was just next to it. However, the place was rather isolated from the city. After entering the residential area, Gao Ru Shui moved forward with her head lowered. The streetlight released pale light, and she did not dare look into the forest to the side because the green looked rather creepy at night. Damn, I left my book and water bottle in the taxi. She had left in such a hurry that she had accidentally left her stuff in the taxi. The water bottle was fine, but she needed that textbook for her class. Thinking about that, Gao Ru Shui felt more agitated. The taxi had already left, so it was too late for her to go and grab it. She glanced at the time on her phone. It was about 10 p.m., and the residential area was practically abandoned. However, the lights of the building far away was still on which gave Gao Ru Shui some semblance of comfort. Shi Xia Hu had its own garden. Crossing through it, Gao Ru Shui came to the third building. Her home was on the thirteenth floor of the third building. It sure is quiet tonight. After entering the corridor, Gao Ru Shui's exposed arms felt cold. She clapped, and after the voice-activated lights came on, she did not move forward. Compared to before, nothing seemed to have changed but Gao Ru Shui just felt something was not right. The words that the driver had told her inside the car kept flashing through her mind. Murder, eye gouging, they were like a rope slowly tightened around her neck. Is that driver the killer? His tone was extremely weird. The serial murders happened across town, which means that the killer had to be able to move around town quickly. They have to have access to easy transport, so it's not impossible for the killer to be a taxi driver. Did I just sit where a dead body once lay? Could the trunk be filled with bloodied murder weapons? The more she thought about it, the more afraid she became. She would turn back to look every few steps, afraid that people might just appear behind her. She walked to the elevator and pressed the button. When the door opened, the voice-activated lights went out in unison. Darkness fell, and Gao Ru Shui's body froze. She saw a dark human shape walking out from the elevator. Gao Ru Shui bumped into the man, and she realized he was wearing a raincoat. He did not apologize and strode quickly down the corridor. A raincoat? 
but it's not raining. The hood blocked the man's face from view. He was not tall, and the large raincoat covered his legs and shoes. The man left in a hurry, but Gao Ru Shui did not notice anything suspicious like blood on the raincoat. Will it rain later tonight? Gao Ru Shui glanced at the weather forecast on her phone. There was a chance that it would rain later in the night. What a weird man. Gao Ru Shui waited for the man to disappear around the corner before she got into the elevator. The lights were on in the corridor. She watched as the elevator doors closed, and an indescribable pressure surfaced. She felt like a hooked fish, having trouble even breathing. Maybe I shouldn't take the elevator. She reached out to stop the closing door and stepped out, she had a bad feeling standing inside the elevator. She opted for the stairs. She started to climb, but it felt like the stairs were never-ending. When she reached the sixth floor, she heard the door on the first floor open like someone else had entered the safety entrance. Someone is following me? The first thought that came into Gao Ru Shui's mind was the strange man in the raincoat. At the same time, the words by the driver also resurfaced. Could the man be the serial killer? He just killed someone in his building? Her face paled. I've accidentally become one of the witnesses, so now he wanted to silence me? Gao Ru Shui initially walked slowly so that she would not make too much noise, but with the pressure from fear, she started to run. I need to get back home as soon as possible. Footsteps echoed from underneath her. It sounded like someone else was racing up the stairs as well. The distance closed. Gao Ru Shui ran as fast as she could. Her home was on the 13th floor, and there was only a five-floor distance between them. She climbed to the 13th floor without catching her breath. Gao Ru Shui shoved the safety door open and staggered into the corridor. She rummaged through her pocket for the key. The echoes of the footsteps became clearer inside the stairwell, the man was just steps behind her. Her fingers froze, and she had to try twice before she managed to push the key into the keyhole. She twisted the key to open the outer anti-theft door. The sound in the stairwell came closer, the person was probably only one floor away. Quick! Finally finding the key to the inner door, Gao Ru Shui pushed the key in, and the footsteps beside her ears turned into a running gait. The person had already reached the thirteenth floor. The inner door was pushed open and Gao Ru Shui rushed in without closing the outer door. She turned to slam the door close. She leaned against the door and started gasping for air. Finally, home. She adjusted her breathing. Gao Ru Shui turned around and looked outside through the peephole. There was no one in the darkened corridor. All the room doors were locked, and only Gao Ru Shui's outer door was left half open.